Welcome, friends. It's almost midnight, and you've found your way to the Pikecast. Come along as we careen through the catalog of the most formative horror writer of our young adult days, Christopher Pike. From adult perspectives, we'll revisit these YA books our parents probably would never have let us read had they known what lie inside. We tackle one book per episode in a freewheeling and unbiased chat. So grab your battered paperback, pull the flashlight from the kitchen drawer, climb under your bed covers, and devour a good book with us. Greetings, fellow pikers, and welcome to the Pike Cast. I'm Cooper Beckett, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my lovely co hosts. Hi, I'm Cassie. Hi, I'm Becca. Today, we're going back to the Point Horror days to dig into Christopher Pike's 1986 book, Chain Letter. And we're going to be dissecting it in great detail, spoiling each and every plot twist. So consider yourself warned. If you're enjoying the podcast, please leave us a review on the podcast service of your choice. And let's welcome our guest piker this week, Corey, the amazing teen horror blogger who runs GoryCorey.com, is a correspondent for Fangoria, and co-hosts the Scream Teens podcast. We are delighted to have you on, Corey, even Thank if your you so accomplishments much. at your age do put mine to shame. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, yeah. I mean, I, I, when I was looking over your stuff, it's just like, yeah, I knew she did a lot, but holy crap! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, re- really impressive stuff. <laughs> I'm so happy to be on. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we're we're thrilled that you joined us. Um, and we have some questions we like to ask our guests. Uh, I think Cassie's asking you those. Yes, I am. Uh, what was your first major horror read? Oh, I think my first major horror read was probably Benicula. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I Benicula. It. I forgot about Benicula. That book scarred me. I remember we like my teacher like read it in class. It was so <laughs> scary. Um, but for the most part, as a kid, I read a lot of like I read a lot of nonfiction uh, cryptid and like shark attack books. I was really obsessed. Oh, with- okay. I was really obsessed with, like, why sharks attack, so Mm -hmm. I think that was probably the scariest sort of – those were the scariest books I read, and I was sort of able to get away with reading them because they were, like, educational. Yeah, (laughs) nonfiction is is always appropriate. Yeah. I like that you (laughs) cite Benicula as one of your first two because I think – I can't remember specifically because I have the brain of a fish, but (laughs) one of our previous guests, it's mentioned that one too, and I remember – I remember, so our listeners are probably going to know this, but to this day, I am still terrified of white, like albino rabbits because of the red eyes. They are so scary. And it's because of that dang book. They, it like scarred me too. Like it was, it was genuinely scary for a kid. (laughs) Yeah. And us did not help. Jordan Peele's Us. No. Oh, yeah, right, That right. was too much for me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I so saw that. It just reps. took me back. I was like yeah. third grade all over again. No, thank you. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm not, I'm not certain, Cassie, but I think it may have been Claire because the bunny is in uh, – isn't isn't the bunny in – no. No, I'm thinking of the wrong book. I remember the bunny scene in the book, but I don't remember which book because right. it was so extra and it was just thrown in. It's not in. Whisper of Death, is it? No. I don't think no. so, no. It was like a bunny in somebody's yard. Last Act? I yeah. think it's Last Act. Mm. No, that could be. Okay, but yeah, there was right. there was a bunny, yes, for <laughs> sure. Oh, okay. <clears throat> sorry. I forgot I was doing the second question to you guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, what makes horror your favorite genre? Oh my gosh. Um, I love the social commentary in it, and I love everything scary. Uh, I don't really know why. I just adore creepy stuff. <laughs> very nice very that's nice. totally fair well, and like it's, it it's always to funny point. with the social commentary aspect because so many people are like you keep politics out of horror which is but it's, it's the like, whole point of horror it's always been you know it's yeah. always been there literally and you can't you definitely can't say dawn of your dawn of the dead is your favorite horror movie exactly and then ask us to keep politics out of horror you can't do that that's like saying keep politics out of like punk rock or heavy metal <laughs> like it's just it's, yes right it, that's like the whole point of horror and i don't think enough people understand that but like the whole point of it is to point out social norms within mm-hmm. different cultures and different societies and like critique them for the most part so we c- literally can't keep politics out of horror 
No, really what they're just saying is keep things that make me uncomfortable in the ways I don't want to be uncomfortable. Yeah. But like horror is supposed to make you uncomfortable. That's what good art does. Absolutely. What is your go-to horror? It can be a movie. It can be a book. What? Scream? (laughs) Wow. No hesitation there. I know. I love that. I appreciate that so much. And I know Becca probably does too. too. That was such a good. (laughs) It was so immediately. I know, yeah. I love it. And just, it was so, like, with such conviction, like, no <laughs> doubts, nothing. People, people always looked out on Scream, and they make fun oh, of me no. so much for it, but it's my no. favorite. And, like, we love it. The Scream. It's definitely a good. Thank you. Yeah. The Scream TV series on MTV is, like, one of the things that got me into horror to really? start with. So I really. I haven't seen that. It's very much a teen drama show. I love that. No, I'm, like, a so CW, fun. like, fan girl. Yes, like, I will you watch like those CW, teen things. It's like a CW <laughs> show with so much more violence. It is so oh, gory my, for no reason. I didn't reason. know that. Nobody's – I haven't seen people talking about that like ever, but I see it on Netflix sometimes. And it's, I was like, should I watch this? I it's love It's so Scream. good. It's I'm going to so do it good. now and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tweet about it later and be like, this is so good. Thank you, Corey. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just – I love it. And like all the characters – and I love all the actors too. I stalk them all on Twitter. <laughs> but yeah, the original Scream movie is like my go-to. I watch it 24-7. I have almost all of it memorized. (laughs) It's really funny how many people will get down on Scream, mainly because I think of the of the movies that followed it, not Mm -hmm. because of the it itself. It's like you can't be upset with something for its popularity. Yeah, it it, that's just unfair to the movie. Like Uh judge it as itself. Not that, oh, well, the year later, you know, there was there was Valentine and there was I Know What You Did Last Summer and there was like 16 other veiled scream well, referencing it, movies. It's like people don't hate on Halloween when right. there's Friday the 13th. Like it's I think it's mostly because it's a comedy, but yeah, that's, I think that's, that's what makes it so fun. And I love how it references so many horror movies like you can just tell that Wes Craven has such a love for horror. Oh, without question. I think it's definitely a love letter to the horror yeah. to horror fans. I think, and it's I just anything with Matthew Lillard too. I'll yes. just I for, love for the, Matthew my Lillard whole so life. Much. I, yes, I will watch him in anything. Like him and Paul Rudd are my two that I yes. like. I cannot get enough of them, and they are like the same person nearly in so many of the movies. <laughs> I just I'm like more, more of it, please. He plays such a good villain, though. I love he does. It. Yeah, he did. He yes. really does. He does. <laughs> and I don't know if you saw, but when they announced Scream Five. He tweeted, I wonder if someone could survive a TV yeah. to the head. Yeah. <laughs> God, I hope. So, I want to believe that means he's coming back somehow because that'd be awesome. In yeah, my dreams. So. Even just like a little ghost projection somehow yes. in the movie. Like, give it to oh me. I'll God. take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so he I was have... like a little ghost projection in the background in Scream 2. He was yeah. in one of the party scenes. That's so cute. I have a <laughs> random story to tell you guys. Hit us. All right. So I cut my finger the other day while I was cooking, right? Like my, I had, so I just got these brand new knives. Let me backtrack. So I just got these brand new kitchen knives and they're okay. super sharp. Okay. So I'm cooking and the knife falls off the counter and on its way down, it swipes my finger. Right. Oh no. Yeah. And it sucked. And I, I love gore. You guys know that. I love blood. <laughs> But when it's coming out of me, <laughs> I'm, like, crying. Like, no. And so, like, I made my mom bandage me up because I'm a 30-year-old who still needs her mother to, like, help with blood. <laughs> and, like, so I'm in the bathroom and she's like, do you feel okay? And I'm like, I'm feeling a little woozy here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it, too. And most people who are fans of gore are not fans of gore coming out of their body. It's terrifying. That's not uh that's it, it's not a, you know, one equals the other kind right. of thing. <laughs> well, let's move into chain letter. Uh and I think Becca you're reading the back of the book this time. Sir, right? I am. Awesome. Okay. They all shared the same secret. Now they would share the same terror. When Allison first read the ch- chain letter signed your caretaker, she thought it was some terrible sick joke. Someone, somewhere, knew about that awful night when she and six of their friends committed an unthinkable crime in the desolate California desert. And now that person was determined to make them pay for it. One by one, the chain letter was coming to each of them, demanding dangerous and possible deeds, threatening violence if the demands were not met. 
No one out of the seven wanted to believe that this nightmare was really happening to them until the accident started happening and the dying. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Uh, and the, our artwork is, it does not look like Brian Kotsky artwork, uh, but it is evocative, if weird, that that crumpled uh, mailbox flag is a little yeah. odd there. Reasonably accurate stuff here, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a cute mm-hmm. house. <clears throat> I mean, it's a cute nobody house. dies in the whole book except for Neil. Which is the only unfortunate thing to me. But we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that. That's interesting. Okay. I would um, like to say that, um, t- like, about the cover, um, it would be yeah. really neat if they had, like, the purple spoiled meat looking envelope sticking out. Because yeah, I really right. wanted to make it a point that it was, like, spoiled meat. So. <laughs> I mean, Chain Letter 2's cover is much better than Chain Letter 1's. Oh, my 1's. God. I have that somewhere. I don't know where I put it. I can't wait to look it's, at it. It's the, uh, the, the scary hand crushing the envelope. Wait, there's mm-hmm. a second one? Mm-hmm. There yeah. is a second one. Is it yes. the same characters? I I have no idea. I have not read it. Oh, although I did read an interview where he uh, he was talking about how he added supernatural elements to the sequel. Oh, so who knows? Sequel September. <laughs> yeah, we're doing that in sequel September. Okay. <laughs> Before we really get into this, have any of you ever received a chain letter? Like in my email, right? Yeah. But like an email, like a like a real chain letter, like where you had to actually recopy something and resend it to people in physical envelopes. Is this, is no, this a common that, thing? That I, I didn't even know that was well, a it, thing that happened. It was a thing. It was a thing in the eighties. Why did you guys wow. do that? What's Why? The point? Yeah, because we were stupid and we <laughs> believed in things like. Uh, I mean, it was all about if you don't send this to this many people uh bad things will happen to you there was also a scam where the idea was you would send a dollar to the person on the list before (laughs) you and then send it to the next person they they would send a dollar to you but somewhere along the line it was supposed to make you rich clearly it didn't there's they still do that with like there's this thing that goes around every now and then on social media where they're like, if you buy this many books for this person, this mm-hmm. person will yes, buy this many books exactly. for you. And I'm like, this does not make logical sense. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, so that's that's what chain letters were in the 80s. That's wild. What were the stakes though? I like, can't what they did you do those? it? Well, right. I mean, the the idea of a lot of them were just implying bad things were going to happen to you if you didn't do it. It seems way more serious than like an email chain letter. Like I feel like if I would have got one in my mailbox, I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to die next week. Like, I know. It, it was, <laughs> I know. It was yeah. way scarier. Because it was it also too. usually yeah. handwritten and from a friend. Oh dear God. Ooh. If my friends did that to me, I'd be very upset. Because they them. had to have your address. That's a lot of postage too that people oh, – I bet yeah. it was just – it's yeah. probably just a stamp made up by the Postal Service trying to get people <laughs> to buy a bunch of stamps That's in the a, 80s. That was smart. Cassie, way, way to dig down on the conspiracy. That's <laughs> what I'm here for, guys. Thanks. It's all about the post office. <laughs> the mailman's like, That's how we could have saved the post one. office. <laughs> we could have, yeah, yeah. But then we switched to email chain yeah, letters right, and right. – <laughs> No, we had like those ones through Instagram that you would like DM people and stuff. Oh yeah, but right. Yeah. I don't think I've ever even like received a real letter from one of my friends. So <laughs> Well, that all that all goes back to this right there. You know, that that all That's goes crazy. back to like not not this specifically. Rarely did chain letters involve, you know, murder packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh yeah. But yeah, it, it was a thing. It was a thing. I that wonder if this. In, in I wonder how long that was going on. Like, did they do that in like the eighteen hundreds as well? Like, <laughs> <laughs> if thou so doesn't, <laughs> they had carrier pigeons bringing chain letters to people. <laughs> I mean, chain yeah. letters would have taken a lot longer mm-hmm. back then. But see, just just look at the march of time. Now you just have to send ridiculous shit to people via Instagram d- d- uh, direct messages, right? <laughs> so so it's much easier, really, Science is what I'm saying. Science and technology. Yeah, technology. <laughs> All the strides we've made have just been for this. Yes. <laughs> uh, one other interesting note, and I'm curious about your books. Who had a physical book? I did. Okay. A what? Good. 
physical book for this. Right? Oh, yeah, I did too. Yeah. In your book, does it have real quotation marks or double apostrophes? Double apostrophes. Oh my God, I have yeah. double apostrophes. Me too. I, hate I that. thought that was interesting. I that never noticed. So you know, it bothers me. <laughs> yeah, it bothers me too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm oh, probably going to see that's it. That's so it's gross. So many random things. <laughs> that space looks so big now that I'm staring at it in between Why did the they two do apostrophes. That? I, don't, I don't know. I, How I'm, offensive. I'm very curious myself. I imagine it has something to do with physical typesetting. Because this may have been early enough that it was still physically typeset. Wait, interesting. Yeah, because I got an original print. I think. Yeah, I think I did too. So it's it, it was written and and set in eighty five. I don't know, but it's interesting. I thought. Well, shall we move into the Midnight Club where we talk about our characters? Yes. And can we just say that there are way too many of them again? <laughs> so, too too it's many. It's so hard to keep up. Holy fuck. And everybody's in love with everybody else, but doesn't know they exist. It was okay. I'm, I'm again, going to just put my cards on the table. The first half of this book, I hated. It was a chore. It's so hard to get through. The second half, I actually kind of enjoyed, but the first half, dear God. This book took such a 180, though, throughout the second half. It really did. Cassie, can you validate me and tell me that this is good the whole way through? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I will, look, I will say, this is a bit of, it was reminiscent of I Know What You Did Last Summer, so I was there for the beginning (laughs) of it, so I was very like, oh shit, these teens did something bad. I will say there were a couple of times where I was like, fucking give me some blood like i am so ready for this like i don't want to hear these people talking anymore so like i had a couple of moments but i also had a couple of those moments at the end so that was kind of a full book thing for me but i enjoyed the beginning Uh, i will say like the twist you guys know how i love a good monologue and a bad guy at the end who Mm -hmm. like tells why they did something so of course the end stood a little bit more but i didn't hate the beginning like like y'all seem to (laughs) We, we, you say y'all. It's, it's, it's only, it's only me hating it. I don't know. Did, did you hate it, Corey? I didn't hate it, but I got a little bored, and it was just because it was hard to keep up with who was who. Yeah, yeah. But, was and then the they went ahead seat. and threw in the most obnoxious of Pike quirks, which is someone doing a play within <laughs> the story. So we get other names yeah. that actually have nothing to do with the story. And one of them is Alice and yes, Alice and Alice and play. Why pick? I can't take it with you. First of all, that is such a strange. <laughs> niche is it a real play. show? Yeah, it's really oh. good, but it's like it's just funky and weird, and like okay. there's no reason it should have been in there. But um, I think once we started getting, I like the drama. Once we started getting into like the drama of her and Tony and all that stuff, I was there for it. But it took so long. It did. It did. Well, let's let's talk about Allison Parker, uh, one of our two ostensible leads, because I would I would qualify Allison and Tony as the leads yeah. here. Um, Allison wants to be an actress. Her her game plan called for four years in UCLA's drama department, followed by forty <laughs> years starring in Hollywood's feature films. Her chances were one in a million, so her parents often said. But she liked the challenge, and she loved acting. Besides. When had she ever listened to her parents? That was my favorite line in the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> I love Al- I, from the second that line was like I was like, yeah, Alice is the best character, one hundred percent. So much respect. <laughs> well, we got we got some description of Allison. Her black hair was long, curly, and unmanageable, contrasting nicely with her fair complexion. That's another one in that un- unmanageable dark hair. That we we realized with Grady last week. Um, yeah, because Anne from Fall into Darkness is like that, and so is the girl from Spellbound. It's interesting. Her dark eyes were big and round, and she had a wide mouth. She is one of several people with wide mouths in this. It's always book. the nose or the mouth. They can't be too perfect, <laughs> Cooper. Well, <laughs> well, the rest of the ingredients were at odds with each other. A button nose, a firm jaw, a low forehead, thick eyebrows. It was amazing nature had salvaged a human face out of the collection. I can't even picture it. It's so strange either. sounding. <laughs> but as Grady mentioned last week, last time, it does sound 
sort of ethnic, doesn't it? Like he was trying to write somebody not white. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why didn't he but, just say that? Well, I, I feel like, uh, I mean, I mean, there's, question, there's, there's the good reason and then there's the likely reason. The, the good reason would be a white man not wanting to uh, write another culture, but we know Pike has no problem with that. <laughs> the likely reason is Pike writing a uh, person of color and the publisher saying, no, no, white people buy books. You write, you write about white people. Yeah. And that's oh. what I think that might be. If, if, if this is a thing here, I think that that we could totally be speculating and it could not be. And he could just write her and was like, yeah, I know a bunch of white bitches like this, you know, like, I don't know <laughs> who knows, but like, I, I do, I think that that would be like a more likely scenario where they were like, uh, I don't, you need to have a white girl who wants to be like famous as the main big character. That's it, interesting. It's, it's a recurring thing too mm-hmm. huh. that we see. Uh, like, I mean, he has talked about how he was kind of uh, forced down this alley of writing the white popular high schoolers and how he worked to uh, adjust what that meant as he went along in his career. This is his second book. Oh, so wow. It's still very, very early, and he's writing as part of a a horror series. This was part of the Point Horror series, and it it stands to reason why um, he might be adjusting the way he speaks and the way he writes uh, for an editor like that, I think. Okay, that makes sense. It's not good. We do not approve, but (laughs) it it makes sense. I didn't realize Chandler, was it? Was it Point Horror? I I believe, I mean, it may not have been initially published as Point Horror, but I know I read it in the Point Horror series. Oh, my God. Because it seems like to have, like, this seems like it has way more of the adult themes that some of his books have versus the other one. Yeah. Like, I, I'm i surprised that they thought, as it is, that it was, there's a now lot of Now, here's where we're going to get a there. well, actually, from our audience. I, and I encourage them to give us one if I'm wrong and this wasn't Point Horror. I wasn't even asking a pointed question. I didn't look it up. Like I, 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 I'm just staring at the book and I'm like, huh, is it? There's some stuff in here that I wouldn't there expect There is from that. some stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about one of the characters that Wait. should have just been lifted out of the story. Pause, 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 Cooper. <laughs> I got okay. something. I got something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we know I love my bad bitches, right? I mean, Alexa. Yes. Okay, so Does Allison, Allison qualify? Not like 100%. But I'm going to give her some credit for this line I'm about to read to you, because I'm going to be honest, (laughs) I barely marked my book this time because I was just, like, reading it and, like, just, I was just flying through these pages. (laughs) (laughs) So there's a line from Allison that I did save that I would like to share. Okay, so Joan is, like, asking where Tony and um, Neil is, and Allison puts her hand to her mouth and she says, why for the life of me, I can't remember where I tied their leashes. (laughs) That was so golden to me. I was like, yeah, bitch, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so that, <laughs> no, we that's, can move on now. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that line. I think I think I was a little bit more underwhelmed about Allison than um, the rest of you because she she just blended in a lot with Fran and Brenda to me. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if it's because they were all introduced in the same scene and it was just like – No, it's because they're the same girls. characters. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, like I just – I didn't – and they weren't – I did – there were a couple of one-liners like the one you just read, Becca, and there were some like inner monologue bits that I was just like, haha. But overall, like – I well, my favorite is later. We'll talk. We'll talk right. about her, but well, we'll get why, to her. So that's why she's that, yeah. not one hundred Alexa like bad bitch. So but she's, she's not like, allowed in the club. She's no, no, no definitely not. But she's climbing up there. Okay. okay. Yeah, she reminds me of that. um yeah. of Rox, Roxy, Rox, no Rox from Whisper of Death. That yeah. one because yeah. she's well, kind of yeah. sassy, but also just more a little bit kind of not, bland. Yeah, a little bit bland. So I wasn't okay. trying to be rude, but a little oatmeal. <laughs> she she felt very like stock teenage yes. girl. Yes, who, like was. Not, like really just nice and that was like her whole character she had a couple and lines that were good though you know, Cassie, nice i think enough, you're though. right though you could have combined allison fran and brenda into one character and it would have been a far better character they were all yeah. exactly the same she could have just been like, sleeping with all the different guys that's true <laughs> i feel like brenda's kind of trash though like i wasn't a brenda kind of gal well brenda let's talk a about little brenda paxton yeah Brenda also wanted to study drama in college, and their school nominated only one person for the Thespian Scholarship Program. So that's drama there. 
<laughs> Certainly, Brenda had enviable qualities, a tall, lithe figure, bright blonde hair and green eyes, sharp features that complemented her sharp wit. Yet Brenda's strengths were her weaknesses. Her cuteness was typical. <laughs> she looked like too many other girls. <laughs> Rude. Aw, Brenda. That's a rough intro. Right there. <laughs> Honestly, is- that sounds like... Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you can go. I was just going to say, that sounds like somebody describing her who's jealous of her to me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. And it is Allison's point of view in that chapter when we're when we're learning about Brenda there. Yeah, which does not make me like Allison that much. <laughs> and Brenda is ostensibly Kip's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, really, did anyone seem to have real relationships other than Allison going out with Tony? I felt like they had a very high school relationship, Kip and Brenda. Were they just going together? Yeah, they just, like, were together just because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fran, who I literally forgot about Me too. until she vanished. Uh, um, I've got a lot of notations about Fran here. Fran had to make the most of the small pleasures in life. Not that she was ugly. Her clear-skinned oval face and wide, generous mouth gave her the foundation for an above-average appearance. Plus, her light brown hair had a natural sheen that none of them could duplicate with expensive shampoos and rinses. Yet she was shy and high-strung. She was a gifted artist, a B-plus student, and when she got around the guys, she inevitably wound herself into a catatonic cocoon (laughs) and couldn't say a word. Poor Fran. And Fran is in love with Neil, who seems so incredibly awkward. I don't understand why they couldn't have talked to each other. Yes. They would have been so cute together. They would have. We'll tell later. This is one of my biggest problems with the book is that Neil didn't notice her because I feel like of all people, Neil would have been the one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though Neil was in love with Allison. But but why? I don't know. Why? He could have been in love with Fran. They would have been so good together. Why? Because plot. Really, that's it. <laughs> I mean, this this is something that comes up a lot, is the, the character who's been in love with the other one. I mean, it's, it's, it is proto-incel in some books. It's kind of sweet in other books. This one's sort of right in the uh, kind of sweet until he's the bad guy. Yeah, sort you know. of. But at the same time, like... Aren't they all the bad guys? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, I, I could not stand Fran specifically because of this shit. All of you think you know everything. I've seen lots of shows on TV, real documentaries, where weird things start to happening to a group of people. And what they find out is that a dark power is at work on them. Maybe that man has... There are no dark powers, Tony interrupted. Yeah, she has like three paragraphs like that in the book. Yeah. I couldn't stand her. (laughs) She's just a little superstitious. (laughs) Not a little superstitious when she says, I've watched lots of TV, real documentaries. That's not a little superstitious. That's This is true and you're all not listening to me. Except it's not true. I think this is like one of the one times excluding Allison's one bad bitch moment that I mentioned where I really actually liked the guys better and that never fucking happens. Yeah. yeah. Ever. No, that is very rare in, in Pike's world. Yeah. yeah. But this, this line I found very interesting. Most of all, she's always been the odd one out, never gone out with a boy, never been given much respect. Isn't that the standard B movie background for a vengeful teenager? Yeah. Like, that's not just creating a red herring. That's actually pointing to a character and saying they're the the villain, but not being true. Yeah, Cooper, definitely. Your, your reading voice was so similar to your not reading voice in that one instance that I couldn't <laughs> tell that you had asked me a question. I thought that was part of the monologue that she was saying, like, or me the too. description. Yeah. And then, and then Corey answered, and I was like, oh, shit, wait. <laughs> wait, that was part of it, though. Wait, okay. Wait. I just pulled up the um, description. <laughs> was of, it a quote? I, sorry, this is like... I just pulled up the the description of the second book, and Fran dies in it. 
She oh, gets killed. So in it the is other... the same, yeah. same characters. Okay. Same characters, and they have to figure out that it is something supernatural. So she was technically oh. correct. Oh damn! Is it kneeled back from the grave. Look at that, <laughs> Fran redeeming herself in book two and in dying way, for it. We love Good a redemption death arc. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of the boys, let's start. Uh, these no, also me. feel like what you missed. There's another girl. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, getting Joe. there. Oh, we have to. I, I I like to single out characters that I appreciate. All right, okay, you I can appreciate that. Joan, I'll... bud. <laughs> what? Sorry. Did you just say you appreciated Joan? I did. Yes. Okay, I cannot wait to hear about this. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, <let's, laughs> me too. I'm sorry. I, I will I will instead move Joan uh, to next here. Okay, I'm so excited. I let's only got thrown about... off because you were like, "Let's go to the boys," and I was like, "Wait a minute!" Oh, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. So let's talk about Zone Zuchlinski. Wait, did you call it Zone? Zone? <laughs> did I say Zone? <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried about the last name. I think it's Zuchlinski. Zekl- Z- Zone Zuchlinski. Zekl- yeah, Zuchlinski. Zuchlinski. That's a wild last name for a book where characters are named Parker and Paxson and yeah, Coglin. She's like the odd one out in the group. So I think she that she is. has to. Joan girls is, always is, have unpronounceable names. It's just a fact. I, I, <laughs> it makes I them more not, mysterious. I yeah. could not not picture trash from Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> She's so in your face. Mm-hmm. This is where, so since we're talking about Joan, I do want to give a shout out for the episode to uh, the haunted outfit on Instagram okay. because she r- draws those renditions of um, like the characters from these teen books. Yeah. And she did one of Joan that oh, I remember. Look that up and, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I remembered this because I had seen it and like at the time. And so I was just rereading the description when I was reading the book this morning. And I was like, this is so familiar. Oh my God, I remember this. And so I went oh, back I to look at that and I was like, this is so good. It's <laughs> one of so her mad. first posts. Yes, yeah, oh, that awesome. one. I it's super good. Say, yeah. While we're on the subject, I just want to say, Katie, also known as the haunted elephant, I love you, bitch. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> she is awesome. I love her so much. And everybody should go look at the outfits for Joan because it's yes. it's when she's coming out of the metal. But well, we should definitely link that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, let's say. Wait, as I'm sorry. Kip- I got more Katie things to say. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, since we always talk about like Alexa being bad bitch, I want to give Katie a shout out and be like, "She bad bitch, bro." Like, <laughs> I want to say that she's up there with Alexa. So you're 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 putting Katie into the Sugar Sisters? Yes. Oh, for sure. Okay. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> you like you like to see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, we can move on. Let's talk about it. <laughs> to, to Joan. Yes. Uh, as Kip was the brain and Tony was the fox, Joan was the jerk. <laughs> Unfortunately, Joan was also the unrivaled school beauty, and she was extremely interested in Tony. I really like the uh, italics on that extremely <laughs> there. Every high school needed a Joan, how are we pronouncing it? Zaklensky. Zaklensky. She separated the jerks from the phonies from the wimps. She was gorgeously gross. Her angelic face let her get away with her crude personality, at least as far as the guys were concerned. She didn't have many girlfriends. And her coarseness just made her all the more attractive. Her eyes were a darting gray, her lips thick and sexy, her hair a taunting, platinum punk-cropped masterpiece more than anything she looked nasty and tony could attest to the fact that the package could live up to its wrapping <laughs> is that not one of the best character I introductions love ever? It. so good i'm so here for joan also the only part of that i disagree with i don't think she wouldn't have girlfriends i would be her girlfriend we would be best friends <laughs> we would do all the cool shit it would be great we would I, want, sisters. I want to know what lip plumper she uses. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Here's the thing. I feel like that. in in modern parlance, Joan would be the kick-ass queer character. Yes. I think so too. Unfortunately, in this book, Joan uh, is asked to spread the rumor that she's gay. Mm. And Joan had been prepared to model naked in the mall, slap the principal in the face, and burn down the whole city. This demand, however, 
she simply could not meet. That's what makes me think she is gay. Me too. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. and the okay. fact that okay. the killer, who I guess we're not gonna, I'm not gonna name at this point because we're. Oh, you can name him. Oh, okay. If, if, if our listeners Neo, like, have not read the book at this point. <laughs> Really, they're not interested in reading the book, I feel like. The fact that Neil, like, chose that out of everything, because, like, everyone else had really bad ones, and just Mm. spreading a rumor that you're gay is, like, I know back then it was, like, more of a thing, but still, I feel like that's not the same as burning down the school, so. It's very true, though Neil gave himself that task, so I I assume he knew Or streaking in front of everyone in school. Yeah. They're, like, they're their stuff. tasks, they make sense to who they are, though, and to what their insecurities and personal beliefs exactly, are. Exactly, exactly. So that's why it's so fitting that hers is gay. And also, like, if you consider being closeted at that age, the pressure of that, not just from itself, but then the fact that her parent, like her father, is so strict, a policeman, they don't say it, but he's probably religious. Like, yeah. There's probably so much there. And then she's overly sexual. Like, she over-sexualizes herself and, and sort of clings to the one guy that kind of is – not afraid of her and that Mm -hmm. kind of doesn't actually want her like not in a mean way but because he's interested in allison so like he'll sleep with her but then you can even see in his parts he's like yeah i wasn't into it and she's still going super hard for it which to me just seems really like like masking behavior like trying to to come off as something you're not definitely i have to say that you guys like that whole description made me like joan a lot more so thank you (laughs) (laughs) i I told you becca i liked you well, when Cassie just broke it down, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, this is good. <laughs> well, and it, that makes a lot of sense because initially that bit was in my problematic section. But if you put it that yeah, way. Same. And and Pike has said that he hid some stuff like that in the early books. And we found, uh, you know, queer flags in the early books. So that makes total sense. And makes me like her even more. Did anyone else get a bit of a queer vibe from Neil to maybe that was just me? I did. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, yeah, a little bit. I, it, it, some of his conversations with Tony and just like Neil the and way Tony's friendship alone just struck me yeah. as like two very closeted boys. It, yeah, in very much so. Like they have a like all three of them. In fact, Kip, Neil, yeah. and Tony are very close in a way that boys in the eighties weren't. And that's not to say that they were like in love with each other. I just think they were all independently queer and that they were that's like, fair. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to the boys, starting with Kip Coglin, who's sort of the goofball I get, but he has a 4.0 average and it's going He's the to smart MIT. One. The nerd. What? He's the nerd, right? Sort of. Is he? He's, not He's really also a nerd. got the Maverick, the '77 Maverick car. Like they're they're not really defined as what they are. Like Tony is the jock, but what really are Neil and Kip in the uh, archetypal scheme of things? Kip to me struck me as like the class clown sort of mm-hmm. who just like happened to also be smart at the same time. Yeah. He, according to this, he had a buffoon's nose and a Aww. rabbit's ears, plus fair hair that had an unfortunate tendency to stick up. You know Kevin J from Mean Girls? Is that his name? Mm-hmm. The mathlete? He oh, reminded me of him. interesting. Okay, yeah. But that's why he's like super smart, but also like this is my personality. Like I don't want to be seen as like just this smart like brainiac. So also, I thought I'm gonna he was be, a like, little more popular than that though. Like not as was he? dorky. That might be. That might Maybe. be. In, I don't in, know. Mathletes are definitely not cool at all, and, and I don't think <laughs> no. they would be driving a fancy, cool uh, car. So that's fair. I think no, I just mean cool. for the no, no, no. <laughs> they were in high school. school. We no, can just for the different. movie. Just for right. the movie oh. is all I meant. That was the point. In the movie, they're not supposed to be serious. Yeah. Cool. I, any mathletes listening to this, I appreciate you, and I think you're super cool. <laughs> you are just one to be smart fair. cookie. Yeah, you're very cool. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, especially me. I think going back to like when I said like I, this is like one of the one times where I like the guys more. I think it's because like they really mixed up the ser- stereotypes because like yeah. Tony's like a That's jock. True. However, he's super kind in parts. I mean, I guess like he did hit a guy and drive off or whatever, but like he. Well, uh, let's be clear. We all hit a guy and drove <laughs> off, true. so we That's have to true. take their their kindness. That that's the floor right there. <laughs> we we that's need true. to go up from that. 
But I feel like, the, like, he's done, like, really nice things in, like, his relationship with Neil and stuff. Like, I just feel like, even though he's a Jack, he's not, like, the Jack that we typically see in Pike books, you know? Where he was, like, yeah, a douchebag. Yeah. I don't, so, I, I vibe. I, I vibe. Like, I feel like he and Allison, to me, were, like, they are caricatures of the most popular, like, prettiest, like, best people. Mm -hmm. But then they're, like we have to knock them down and make them more relatable. And it's, it feels too intentional. I think to me that it's like, really like why? Like there are so many times where they're like, Oh, I'm so nice. And they're trying to drive home the point that I'm, that they're nice, these two people. But then like, he just fucked over his friend knowing he had feelings for this yeah. girl and the girl just blows him off. Like when, when they do the quote where she's like actually turning him down, she's an asshole, dude. Like <laughs> I read that. I read it like two or three times. Cause I was like, she goes, He's like, do you want to go out Friday? She's like, no, that doesn't work. He, what about Saturday? That's better, but still, no. Sorry, that's it. Yeah, just it was like, fucked up. So it was so rude. mean. I know. If she had and just then, said like straight out, like I don't like you like that, it would have been so yes. much better. Yeah. yeah, like just be honest. But like she, they were both just kind of jerks, in my opinion. So like, yeah. the way that they kept trying to push them is he's nicer than he's not a normal jock. He's actually very kind and like deep. Like, is he though? He just fucked over his best friend in the world. Like. Mm. Mm. And, and after mm. saying he'd never do that, too. yes, yeah, I have a I have a thought coming. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, yeah, <it's> coming. <laughs> so okay. in terms of like, um, how mean she was when she like turned him down, like that was fucked up. Do you, and if Christopher Pike is listening to this episode, like I'm not dissing you. I'm just talking about white men right now. But my thought is like, as a white man writing this, and you know how like white yeah. men. Okay, thank you. I feel like you know where I'm going. With no, this. I totally, I totally know where you're going, and I 100 percent agree. Right, okay. it's like when a girl I, I turns would like, you down. I would like our listeners to hear it because, <laughs> okay. because otherwise, it's just you know how like white men. Yes, <laughs> and then we're just like yes, yes, we do know. We all know <laughs> unanimously. Yes, we know. basically, like maybe like not as like okay. So Christopher Pike might have been writing this in as like a woman turns down a man. They get painted in, like, a bad light. Yes. And maybe, like, I'm not saying Pike is this person, but, like, is it possible that we just, well, I guess that doesn't really mean anything. I totally see what you're saying. Thank I don't you. think, because they give us the exact quote here, and from just the quote without any, like, tone, any, like, facial expression, anything, that quote, as it stands alone, is rude. Like, right. it's not, it's super short, and, like, okay, it's not as mean as you could be. It's not like she was outwardly just being a dick, but she was very short, and it wasn't, right. like, it wasn't a respectful turn down. It wasn't, yeah. it was just very clearly, like, I don't have time for you. Right. I won't have time for you. Sorry. Next. Like, 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 it definitely sounded shitty, for sure. Like, yeah. But part of me is like, I don't know. I just feel like it was written that way to be like, kind of feel bad for him and not give a shit about her, I guess. No, definitely. And I yeah. think also, <laughs> like, one thing we don't talk about a lot is how, like, terrifying it can be to turn someone down when you're, yes. oh, yeah. yes. when you're a girl yes. because, like, you can be killed and stuff. Like, that's right. Shit. But I don't think she was in that position necessarily. She didn't seem to be really uncomfortable around Neil. So True. I don't know. True. No, Which yeah. And it just. Funny because he's the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we can only really take it from, like, I guess, face value, just like as what it says. And, like, it. it I think there are situations where I could have read that and just been like, um, like, oh, was this. Was, was he trying to just paint her in a bad light? Or is this really how this happened? Right. But, like, True, yeah. I don't know. It just. It wasn't like he was even remember. I mean, he was remembering, but it was just like it. It presented it to us as if that's a flashback to what actually happened, yeah. not his right. vision of it only. Right. I don't know if I explained that. Thank you guys for coming through it when I couldn't. I was like at a loss for words. Like, how do I put this? <laughs> like, Understandable. Well, no, it, it is a very. Uh, it it's a very welcome point because we have seen what we theoretically think is Pike putting his own biases into the work. Mm -hmm. And we all know as writers that we do that. So it is always interesting when we see things that look like obvious biases come across because then it becomes whether or not it's about character or it's about author. Right. You know, so it, it it's always interesting to me when, when it sort of stands out. Mm hmm. Because otherwise you have, you know, there's more than one character in here who is described as not, uh, that the, the person they're in love with doesn't know they exist. Like there, I think Fran has that and she's in love with Neil who, uh, Allison doesn't know. You know, it's, it's, it's an obnoxious incestuous circle really. <laughs> 
But speaking of Neil, let's talk about him not as the villain. Let's talk about him as the character up until he doesn't burn to death in the house. He's another stereotypical Pike character, that like sick, thin, yeah, frail sickly boy. boy yeah. who, who may have diabetes, which is another one of di- uh, with diabetes. I was just thrilled, uh, tell me, ladies, that, you, that he didn't have AIDS. Because oh, I didn't even think that, about that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that's where they were going with it. And when it was cancer, it's like, oh, thank God. I don't, we don't need another oh, Pike I can character see. with AIDS. Yeah, I can see why you would think that from the Midnight Club too. But right. I, it didn't occur to me in this one, but I can I can see it after the yeah. fact now. I, I when, he, when they revealed – so I read this when I was younger and then I haven't read it in a really long time. So when I was reading it, I was like, it seems like something else is wrong with him. Yeah, like, right, it seems right. a, right really frail and stuff and then they're like oh he has cancer and i was like how do his friends not picked up on that i picked up on <laughs> yeah, that like, exactly. what the heck <laughs> exactly they were a lot nicer about diabetes in this book probably because he didn't actually have it they were but- <laughs> <laughs> they, they were <laughs> like it was a lot more open about it and he didn't even have it but like in the last book didn't... we read um wait did he not have it no he no no he cancer. just he had cancer, cancer. oh because he was lying and i thought he had I'm sorry mm-hmm. so by the end i thought he had everything like I thought he was just- <laughs> oh god i thought yeah. And honestly, so I, 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 it's funny that you mentioned that chain letter, the next one goes into some kind of paranormal activity type of thing, because I, I kept thinking this one, like, because he was so strongly convinced that it was what he did and the mental mm-hmm. toll of that mm-hmm. and the guilt that was making him physically sick. And I thought that like, that's such an interesting concept in movies and stories and stuff, just yeah. the way that your body can manifest trauma. And I, I thought that that was really interesting, but then they didn't really go into it as much as I would like. And because they didn't go into it, I thought it was going to be something supernatural. Yeah. And then I didn't get that either. So I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I I feel like they really, really oversell what a great guy Neil is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really for no other reason than to throw us off the scent. But I think that but did I it. Also- I think that that made it more obvious because I was like, well, who's going to want to expose them more than Neil and who's going to talk about being like taking care of them? Yeah. And they did. They kept putting him in in places where it was like obvious, too. But yeah, like, oh, he's sipping the water. He's drinking this. He's of course, his body's used to it. He's fucking got cancer. He's been taking worse, like stronger medications than that. Like Mm -hmm. just so many little things that at the end you're like, oh, damn, like. I should have seen this. I you probably saw it. I didn't see it. I will the first time. I know. didn't want to see it. I I knew yeah. it was I knew it was coming and I was like, "No, not Neil." <laughs> I mean, really, I I often will be able to pick out the bad guy, but until he quote burned to death, I was not in the it's Neil column. Really? That was so fast. But the moment too, right? the moment they mentioned like I mean, you could not have foreshadowed this any more obviously. Yeah. I thought it was Brenda and Joan, like, working together. <laughs> I could definitely see that. Yeah. I thought that Brenda and Neil were working together. Ooh, that would have been good. So this was the line that made me positive it was Neil, and it's on page 126 out of 200-ish. So far, the firemen going through the debris had found only one body, the charred and scattered pieces of a skeleton of an individual, approximately five and a half feet tall, who had worn an emerald ring on his left hand. Five I mean, if you think feet? it's Neil, you'd say it was Neil. Yeah, exactly. So That's what it the was only obvious. reason you would not say it's Neil is if it, <laughs> if it isn't. I mean, it was just like, okay, okay, I see what you're doing here. Uh, yeah. I have a question. <laughs> yes. How do we think he got the dude's body to the house? Like, because he was like really weak and frail. How did I mean, he? Uh, I'll be. I'll be honest. I don't believe a single thing about Neil being the mastermind here. <laughs> so do you? Okay. I mean, no. I'm, I mean, I know. It, I know he is. I'm not saying that it was actually someone else. I'm just saying. Christopher Pike did not give me enough to suspend my disbelief that Neil could do that. I didn't think he was smart enough, first of all. And second of all, like, I don't think he could have carried that dude's body to his house. No. How did he no, do and, that? Yeah, I know. I, exactly. How did he do that? My Ooh, guess is Pike friend. actually had no idea who the bad guy was mm. until he decided it was Neil. Because 
of all the things that are like, you know, the thing about most magicians is they won't lie to you. They'll mm-hmm. just distract you, right? Right. So uh, most most mystery fiction is about distraction, not about lying. Yeah. And when the caretaker says, it has come to my attention that you suspect I am one of you, let this be made painfully clear I am not. That's lying. Yeah. And it's it's also, and and that really just rubbed me the wrong way in this. It well, really I feel because me. for his mental state, though, he doesn't feel like he's one of them anymore. He feels like they've betrayed him and don't care about him. I, so I, he I feels get that, but separate. he's also on the list of people he's talking about not being one of. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not saying he's not a little batshit bananas. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, as far as it being an outright lie, he could believe that. So maybe to him, it's his truth. No, okay, I think he okay. definitely did believe that because he felt yeah. like he was the man, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he started having this weird, like, and they don't go into it, but when when you're going through, like, chemotherapy and stuff, when you have cancer, like, there are things that happen, like, to your body, to your brain that – Mm -hmm. can alter how you're thinking or the things you remember or the things, you know, the way your thought processes work. So it, I mean, it's believable. It just, the parts about him being able to physically carry out all that stuff. That's the part that I'm like, what are you doing over there? (laughs) Like, what is he just carrying, digging up a grave? Like how difficult must it be to dig up a grave? I mean, I know they dug it with their hands or whatever, but I just imagine him taking like a weird wheelbarrow there and like having to, (laughs) having to like bring the body upstairs into his house. Like that would be... If it's a made huge a movie, slapstick really sequence funny. that's not, yeah, the, where where the wheelbarrow keeps falling over and the, the body falls out, yeah. and then yeah, yeah. But it it is absolutely unbelievable that he could do that. Yeah, you're right. Let's talk about Tony. Um, is it is it bizarre to anyone else that he's famous? What? Yes. In in town, he's like the famous football and people player. People oh. ask him for an autograph. Yeah, that is weird. That's like not a thing. Like in it's small not a towns thing at all. Yeah, even in like really small towns, that's so. Like, did he win anything like extravagant? Because I could I could imagine in like a super backwater small town, if the if the if the I kid has like done something really great that's nationally covered, like that would be something that you're super proud of, maybe. But I don't like, know. We don't, I've been in really – I've lived in really small towns where that's yeah. happened. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can you can like the quarterback of the local, you know, high school sports team, but the town doesn't generally – I mean, he he is so convinced that he is a famous athlete <laughs> that he's impressed that Allison doesn't treat him – like the star he seems to think he is. Yeah. Like, like there's there's this quote here. He always felt both elated and annoyed whenever he heard of Allison's interest in him. Elated because he was attracted to her. Annoyed because she was fascinated with someone who didn't exist. She saw only his image. The guy who could throw the perfect spiral to the perfect spot at the perfect time. If she were to get to know the real Tony Hunt, that shallow, insecure jerk, she would be in for an awful disappointment. And then here's the, besides, Neil had a crush on Allison, and he never messed with his friend's girls. (laughs) So that was a lie. (laughs) So there's a lot to unpack in this paragraph here. Um, Because number one, Allison doesn't seem to give a shit at all about Tony's image. And who would? Image, right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So he's assuming something that's not true. <laughs> he's lying about whether he's interested. Like there's, it's, it's just a lot. And he's so bland. <laughs> I, okay. So I don't like him as a character, but the part you just read, I feel like I can relate to that. Like having people have an image of you and feeling like, yeah, like I feel like you don't actually know how like weird and fucked up I actually am when I'm not taking cute well, selfies on the internet. So like, I understand true. that part. Um, but I will also 
add a small uh, like little note that my experience with very small towns comes from watching reruns of the Gilmore Girls. So um, <laughs> it's probably not the best frame of reference to base my judgments off of whether people would high five the quarterback. <laughs> Look, as much as we'd all like to live in Stars Hollow, I would love it. It's it so, does not so exist. Nice. It so has never existed. There is no town like that. Sookie can cook for me. I know. Wouldn't it be wonderful? <laughs> Uh, this this line here, this description from Tony's point of view is really bizarre. And I want to hear from you if you think it's written poorly or if it just says something really, really bad about Tony. He had gone out with a number of girls and had always viewed them as people. <laughs> Not necessarily an inferior class, you understand, who were there to have fun with. What even is that line? I think that I line think is I misogyny. That. I think it's updating yeah, well, yeah. his misogyny, which like I think is common. Yeah. Especially in like teenage boys. So I read it and was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I think that is a very teenage boy frame of mind. Like <laughs> yeah. they're not real people. Those are just kind of things that I can look at and have fun with. Like, mm. Go sit down and play your video game, son. I don't <laughs> like that <laughs> look you're giving me. <laughs> he struck me as like a very Holden Caulfield character, which yes. is like oh, yes. so yes. annoying. Yes. And I was God. like, can you just stop being emo for like three seconds? <laughs> we get it. No one understands you. Like that's ugh. yes, that's I think that's what I was trying to drive. Was just like he's tries so hard. He's like, Oh, I'm so misunderstood. I'm so this, I'm so that. Like, come on. Are you though, really? I, I f- kind of see him as uh, Pistol Pete Decilio from uh, Parks and Rec. Yes. Where oh my God. everyone is just obsessed with his dunk and he wants to be known but as Pistol Peter Pete, Decilio. Pistol Pete respects women, okay? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Sometimes life dunks you. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, I've got a character here who doesn't have a character at all in the book, but Pike still takes a chance on just stomping on her here. Sandra Thompson. Who is that? I Sandra saw the name Thompson on the list. plays uh Penny in the play. And overweight oh. Sandy already <laughs> looked like someone's mother. She was a fine actress though. Wow. Like okay. he didn't need to be mean to this character. No, he just Poor wanted Sandra. to. <laughs> that was just like a free shot. Yeah. And because we haven't had a, a, a teacher hate on in a while, Mr. Hoglin. Oh my God. He is short, pear-shaped, middle-aged man with a thin gray beard and a thick jet black toupee. He was a superb instructor, though, knowing how to offer advice that didn't cramp one's individual style. (laughs) Can we talk about how every high school theater teacher looks like that? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm surprised he didn't have a guitar on his knee. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So those are the characters. That's the Midnight Club. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get deep into the plot, as it were. Stick around for more of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, friends. Where else can you get this kind of programming than the podcast? Nowhere. That's where. But we're trying to keep the lights on here. If you like what you're hearing and want it to keep happening, jump over to our Patreon at thepikecast.com slash Patreon and throw us a few bucks to join our private Discord server. Higher tiers get books, stickers, bookmarks, and even personalized shirts. That's thepikecast.com slash Patreon. Now we realize we've been negligent here at the Pikecast, so we want to take a moment to shout out to each and every one of our many wonderful patrons. Allison, Alicia, Amy, Anastasia, April, Boots, Bryce, Christian, Crystal, Jack, Jasmine, Jamie, Jeanette, Jenny, Katie, Katie also, 
Kristen, Libra Labra, Nicola, Nicole, Norma, Rebecca, and Tom. Thank you so much for your support throughout all this time on the podcast. And we will do our best to not neglect thanking you again. Once, Osgood and Frost were the up-and-coming stars of the burgeoning paranormal investigation TV show craze before a hoax put an end to their friendship, partnership, and television careers. Now, over a decade later, Prudence Osgood is a barely functioning alcoholic ghost hunter for hire. Her yearning for mystery and adventure is reignited when she receives a cryptic, untraceable email. She can't resist embarking on an investigation that tugs threads, winding through a sinister series of disappearances, her former partner's family, and a night 20 years ago when a semi blew a yellow light and nearly killed her. Reviewers are calling As Good As Gone a masterfully vulnerable and relatable 21st century horror story and a bourbon-soaked supernatural mystery with sparkling dialogue that sticks the landing on LGBT characters and main character Prudence Osgood, as tortured as she is clever, broken in all the best ways, and a true heroine for our times. Buy it today at As Good As Gone as a paperback, ebook, or audiobook narrated by me, J.J. Ronvier. Welcome back to the podcast. Now we're moving into Remember Me. Well, we already talked a lot about the plot, but this is where we really dig into the plot. Um, I didn't feel the menace at all in the first third of this book, while everyone else is panicking, sort of. Mm -hmm. Including Neil, who's saying, it's like we're in a haunted house. We can't leave. <laughs> it's like, eat. I don't feel it at all. Like... Even even your regret for killing a guy, I don't feel it here. They did not regret killing him. I'm sorry. They no, were they just didn't. they were just mad they were in that situation to begin with. They didn't well, care they were about all him. Really drunk. Yeah, like all of them. Like we we uh, we've noticed in Pike that our our teenagers are drinking like alcoholic adults usually, and like here here's the. <laughs> The wait in traffic, this is from leaving the Beach Boys concert. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was excited about that. I really oh, liked the tell. band and I was like, yeah, I would go there. <laughs> I do too, but it, it is funny because uh, he felt loaded and hadn't even had a drink. Then again, there had been enough dope smoke in the air to waste <laughs> the security guards. The Beach Boys drew all kinds. We all know the Beach Boys fans get wild. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> such a weird band to put that on i love it it is very weird and i like that's that's one of the random details in this book that i'm like i really love that i don't know why it's there but i love it <laughs> i just re read it and was like wow this is dated <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah and i i believe this is kokomo beach boys here so Ooh. this isn't even like beach boys at the peak of their power I this is it. 80s beach boys oh my so god good. Uh, but the wait in traffic was tedious. The concert had strung them all up, and now they had to move like snails. A half hour later, they were still captives of the carbon monoxide spouting train. To pass the time, Kip, who was driving naturally, and Brenda set to work on the remainder of the beer. Joan even had a couple of cans, though her dad always gave her a sobriety test. <laughs> When she got home from being out late and Tony thought, what the hell? And put away a couple of beers himself. Like how Ready? there's so much drinking happening in the car. We love responsible after drivers. The concert. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really ridiculous. So they, they're out in the desert and they're distracted by like a four page sk uh, skit. Yeah. From uh, Kip which, of Coach Sanger fucking a cheerleader, which I thought was real, but then wasn't. Kip put so much effort into that, and it was, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. really weird. <laughs> Who was the girl? Joan. Joan, oh, yeah. wait. No, but I thought she said that wasn't her, and she got really upset. But he – because it was Maybe fake. it was Brenda, because Brenda's his girlfriend. No, I thought oh, he yeah, was I, doing the voice himself. 
no, the girl it was, was a girl. too. Yeah, oh, no, okay. I thought there was a girl, and like she's playing along with it, like pretending he's because she's like on your team right, and stuff right. like that. So I thought. I don't think it was Joan though because Joan got so upset. Like she was – she was like, I would not do this. And that's another thing too, which is really weird. She like got so upset at being – like at possibly being seen as like in the sexual like way even though she's so overtly sexual with Tony. Well, that was like a weird – like that was first of all a a grown man that like they were accusing her of having sex with. And like I don't know. The fact that Kip – like th- that was so long the, <laughs> the <laughs> recording the fact that he put so much work into that for that stupid joke was like really strange right you can and tell that he was just like slut shaming her yeah yes yeah and it was it, yeah i would be pissed too but then she reaches forward and turns off the lights yeah, which right, is the right. weirdest thing you could have done so explain why she does that yeah and the only thing i can think is that she sorry no no go ahead <laughs> um, the only thing that I can think is that she, like, I know that if I've been, a bis- been in a situation where I'm extremely, like, distraught and overwhelmed, like, if a lot of people are saying different things at mm-hmm. once, like, my brain does not compute it. Like, it it won't work. So, like, I know that one of the girls was like, turn the lights off, turn the lights off. And then right. there's a lot, like, you oh. hear the sound, you hear people laughing. So maybe she just, like, meant to turn the sound off. But, like, because she was so frazzled and upset, she just hit the lights. But, like mm-hmm. – they don't explain it or anything. It's just like she just makes this poor decision and nobody knows why. And then they almost die. Like I have a Also, question. I don't know what the Maverick dashboard looked like, but it may be yeah. one of those where the light is right on the dashboard. That's true, too. So it's it's possible that it's not an outrageous, weird decision. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. What was the question? Do you guys think it's her fault or do you think it's anyone's specific fault? Well, no, I think I mean, it's the guy who was drinking at the wheel. It's his agreed. fault. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. But it was I, dark I, out. I mean, it was all of their faults. Yeah, they should just not have been driving. The guy drunk. drinking at the wheel—it's his fault. Okay, I agree. Yeah, and that was yeah, Tony. and I, I definitely—I think it's a shitty situation to put some, like that. Just trying to imagine being Joan in that car, like that's fucking humiliating. Yeah, and like exactly. not even you and these people now. You're like, do they actually think that's me? Like that—that's not me. Like I would. I've been way more upset over like much less of people thinking different things of me. So yeah. I can. Yeah, I can understand being pissed and upset and frazzled enough to hit a wrong button in a car. Mm -hmm, Definitely. So they hit this man. We never know anything about him, which I found interesting. Like, we never learn about him. Um, I just noticed in the the paragraph about the man, uh, an interesting Neil connection. So he lay on his back in a relatively casual position, no limbs bent at radical angles, his tan sports coat flung apart, untorn but filthy with dust. He was not old, 30 perhaps, nor was he tall, having Neil's slight build. Oh. The eyes were wide open, drawn up, focused on the mythical third eye. The gaze unnerving in the trembling light and the haunting wind. It was the mouth, however, that dropped Tony to his knees. A ragged trail of blood split out the corner of the slightly parted lips, and still the guy looked like he was grinning. I thought that was a really visceral paragraph. I really like that. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I but was what was he was he just like walking in the middle of like no idea. Nowhere? Yeah, like what the hell? Like why was like, he there? The right? sports coat is interesting because it suggests something like like he had to have broken down and been walking or something or are we expecting that he was a mafia guy who was brought out brought out into the desert and left for dead or something? Like <laughs> or was he it? just some weird dude who was like yeah, well, that's creepy? True. I'm hoping for the mafia scenario. <laughs> that's where you're going? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> if that were the case, I feel like someone would have gone out like and found his body or tried like yeah, probably. someone would have looked for him, right? I don't Not get just why they Neil going him. out there with his wheelbarrow. <laughs> They could have just left him on the ground and nobody would have known who hit him. Like it was in the middle of the desert at night. Like somebody could have found his body, given him a proper burial, alerted mm-hmm. his family, and the, and they still would have gotten away. Like That's something. What would you guys have done in that situation? 
Well, I hold on. I, I, call the I love that Cassie <laughs> is our friend in the car who's just like, look, let's just go and we'll never say anything about this. I, no, I'm not. Look, they had already made the decision to leave, though. Like, that's, I'm saying, you'd if, probably if I had get already flesh made the in the wheels or something, though, right? Like, they could trace it back to the car. Likely, yes. And that's another thing, too, because remember, they're like, oh, he's like, oh, it was dented in the front, Kip says, but he's like, that's the same dent that's always there. Like, was it really or was he lying? And maybe there was like a little bit of blood or a little something, something on there, too. Like they don't really go too much into it, but I just I feel like that's a big plot hole. Like why bury him? Why go through the step of doing this when you could have just driven away? It's not like it was down the street from your house. Well, I like, think they felt so guilty about it that they were like, we need to do something. That's understandable. Yeah, so they wanted think, to give him I a think burial. It was but definitely like a panic situation. When the burial is also family. about uh, him being lonely out there in the desert, which I actually like. Mm-hmm. That that the, he's it's an unmarked grave, so he'll never have visitors. Oh, so but, sad. so sad. And I then know. Neil puts evidence on the body. Yep, with his cross. And we didn't see this at the time, but takes his ring, which like that's yeah. yeah. Well, that's also very weird. There, like I thought the guy maybe the guy is the caretaker. Maybe I got to read this second book. But like, what are you supposed to do in that scenario? I'm just curious because I never I mean, really thought scenario, about it. I mean, in that scenario, what what you do is you. I mean, <laughs> look, I assume fun. you go to the cops. They're they're they're, they're high schoolers drinking and driving who uh, who killed the person. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're they're and manslaughter charges at the least. Really, I mean the the. <laughs> I'm going to say the smart thing to do would be like Cassie's saying, which is drive away no one would have any expectation that you were out there in the first place yeah right. but couldn't they, they trace know. it back to you somehow not in oh. the 80s i don't think oh no, they okay. wouldn't know no i really don't think so i mean like, unless even, you even today like, that would be Im- hard to do the imprint of your license plate on the guy because <laughs> there's so many different cars yeah. that have the same paint the same like so any evidence that would be left behind i mean i will say they did didn't they touch him like move, yes touch oh him yeah they touched to him check? all over yeah, so they, okay so that's fair that i i'll accept that that they're I don't think they're smart enough to have realized we got to bury him because we got our fingerprints on him. But I mean, I would accept that. I just, I don't know. Me personally, so I feel like I would call the police because in a situation, if you were to hit somebody not drunk, you would call an ambulance. You'd yeah. call the police because you're not – like accidents happen and it, it would be a really shitty situation. But like you would – unless you were doing something illegal or wrong, at which case you should not have been doing that thing. So you shouldn't try to get away from like the repercussions. Mm-hmm. Like right. I just – it makes me so sad thinking about that guy's family. And I know he's not real, but I like, I, okay. No, it's Here's so a, sad. Really, yeah. It is. There's a really quick side thing that you guys probably already know about, but I only found out about it last night that there was like a cave that was sealed up with a man's body inside because <gasps> they couldn't get him out of it. And really? this happened in like 2009. Yeah. And it's, it's called like the um, nutty putty cave or something like that. Like I know it sounds like a kooky name, but it legitimately, this guy got in. He was trapped for 27 hours upside down while people tried to rescue him and his pregnant wife was outside of the cave. And like a few days before Thanksgiving, I found this out in the middle of our movie party last night and then got into like this weird Wikipedia hole and couldn't stop. And like, so now thinking about this guy in the desert, like his family doesn't know where he is. He's been buried by these stupid teens. His family will never find him. They burned his, like Neil burned his body in his house. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm getting distraught. This poor guy. Do we poor think the man? There, do we think there's any chance that he was dead beforehand? Is there like proof Maybe. that he wasn't? No, I don't think so. No. They they even open it up like as a possibility. So that's what I like to tell myself happened. Yeah, because it's like weird to me that he was just like there on the ground, like <laughs> just chilling. I will say they said they said that they felt soft thud against the side of the car, which implies he was up, oh, right? Yeah. Like not down, because I feel like they'd run him over if he had already been on the ground. Oh, that's true. And they would have felt that bumping on the bottom. Because if you go over mm. a speed bump, you feel it. I mean, not there's, comparing a dead body to a speed bump. But, there's but something. I am. Well, I mean, in, in a way, it is. Cassie. Yeah. Like, you'd feel it, you know? Versus a soft pop thud. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to okay. segue from there. So, uh, we've, we've all... I mean, here's the other thing. It's 1986. You're not getting on your cell phone to call the police. Oh, that's true. You're that's true. You're in the middle of literally nowhere. Yeah, that's true. That's so. Do you get in the car and drive back to civilization, which you're already lost and can't find? Yeah, and then try to drive someone out to find this body. Okay, that honestly would be so funny though if they did that and then they couldn't find their way back. (laughs) (laughs) No, really, we we may have killed somebody. Well, 
I don't see a body, guys. Or what if they had come back and the guy's body, like it was the same spot they could verify, but the guy's body was just gone and then all this stuff started happening. Yeah, see, that's mm-hmm. that's I know what you did last summer, I think. Yeah, oh, right, right. Well, yeah, I would assume like an animal or something, had they not buried him, would eat him. True, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, like There's got to be mountain lions out there. Yeah. So I have to keep reminding myself that there were no cell phones in, like this time. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like when you like later on when um Ellison is like in the house thinking that ex murderer is breaking yeah. in and like yes, right. she gets called and then like she's talking about how they must have had like left in order to call her and I was like why didn't they just use their phone outside the door? <laughs> <laughs> I got the same thought. <laughs> and like keep reminding myself like hey Becca there's no cell phones. <laughs> Not only that Becca but they had to go to a call box and plug in an extension phone in the call box. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? And, well, so all the phone lines go to a thing okay. outside. You've probably seen them. And if you open that up, you can plug in a specific kind of phone extension and use oh, that to make a call. But they don't have like normal phones that you don't plug in? Well, no, all the phones are plugged in. I'm not... Sure no, 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 no. Like, don't call boxes have, like, a one phone in them that you use? Oh, no, not that kind of call box. No. Oh, oh, no, like, oh, okay. like, a, like a junction box. Oh, oh, okay. Where all the lines go. That's so weird. It, it was the 80s. <laughs> God, that's bizarre, dude. They, it's like, how could you add the most steps and make this the most detailed, long <laughs> process yeah. in the world? Like, between chain letters and this call box thing? It Ugh. is very complicated. It would be I'm glad that we've come yeah, as far as we have. Well, and- <laughs> so murderers can have easier ways to kill people? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, for the sake of the chain letters, at least the paper and the trees and the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really care about the people. It's the trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think this all, but I think had Neil wanted to do, like, I feel like had he really wanted to kill her, he would have done something differently. I felt like this was all very much like a cry for help. Like, he clearly yeah. doesn't want to go that far, but he's going to. Or it's just that he's still in love with her, so he's unable to kill her specifically. Yeah, exactly. It, there's a lot of weird ambiguity when we get to the end Mm -hmm. uh with neil but and all of his things that he's getting them to do like oh so neil also yanked um kip out of a window yeah how neil also drove somewhere and kidnapped fran also like were his parents was his mother like not worried that he was like driving away to that grandma's house in bakersfield bakersfield uh, yeah, is know, like the right? middle of nowhere like well in in pike's work it's it's always let's pretend the parents are gone i thought wasn't the mom didn't they have this weird exposition when she was doing his funeral where she was like oh i'm so sorry that i was at my relative's house in arkansas at the oh, time oh, this yeah, fire could, yeah. happened and like blah 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 i was like this is weird exposition <laughs> exposition stuff like i don't know I wonder if this will come in <laughs> more important later. <laughs> yeah. So he, I mean, the only, uh, I found, I found from the moment uh, Allison gets her comeuppance on the stage, that's where the book turned around for me because he drops a light on her. And not only does the light hit her, but she actually breaks the light with her fingers and gets zapped from the exposed yeah. wires. It's that's a that's an amazing attack. That really reminded me of like Stu getting the TV dropped on him. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. And it's it's also impressive that she didn't die right there. Yeah. But th- that was right there. It's just like, okay, I'm on board. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But in the meantime, um, (laughs) Brenda is told to tell all the teachers to go to hell. Brenda, I'm sorry. Brenda had the easiest, (laughs) like, tasks. I know that that's I want to know about this guy here. Okay, so remember she goes into the English class (laughs) and she tells that old woman to go to hell. And then... A short black haired boy whom Allison recognized, but whose name she could not place, stood in the back and said with a straight face, 
Miss Fogelson, I don't believe that Brenda has done anything that could be called illegal. She is, after all, only expressing an opinion. And who knows, there may be some merit in it. I suggest we listen with an open mind to whatever she has to say and don't get upset. That was the best character character in the book. Oh. For sure. That is so weird. I thought that was iconic. I love that. (laughs) Okay, why don't we move into the eternal enemy now that we're nearing our discussion of the end of the book because Neil is the bad guy-ish. But I sort of felt bad for him at the same time. Me too. I was like, he's obviously not a good dude, but I get it. He is superhuman at the end there. Um who else was furious when Allison gave him the gun? I was. Oh, yeah. What? Why? Oh, my God. Queen, why? Oh, my God. Why not just shoot him in the leg at least? Like, Right. Well, then, I think the point was the gun was empty. Yeah. But he knew that, right? I think he wanted to see if she really cared. So if she shot, then he'd be like, ha, huh, see, it's empty. And now I know you're yeah, a Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, she could have at least um, like hit him with it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I Kip, Brenda, it. and Joan are just over there, like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Thanks, Allison. Yeah. Sure. And then was she just like accepting death at that point? Like, why? I don't know. I think she was hoping that he wouldn't actually do it if he thought that she cared. I mean, but... he was at least going to kill the others, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what her best case scenario there was. So, rip, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) What did he even inject her with? Because it didn't kill her. uh, Whatever he was injecting her with, it wasn't even the full dose of what he had intended. I think it was still just the codeine. Yeah, wasn't he just going to like... Some liquid codeine. He was going to hit them all with a car or bury them or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. His plan, his master plan, was to, now that he's got these people upstairs in a house... (laughs) He is going to incapacitate them, take them back downstairs, put them in some vehicle. We haven't even seen him driving. Take them out to the desert, lay them on the road, and run over them. See, that would have been the perfect time for him to forget where it happened. (laughs) Because he dug up the body now, so he doesn't really know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even matter anymore. (laughs) I just picture him driving through the desert with all the kids in the back seat, yeah, just like taped like, oh. up and tied up. Yeah, and, and they're it? all waking up, and the the, the, yeah. the sun's coming up, and he's just like, "Fuck, fuck, fuck, fuck." <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna kill you here, guys. I don't know where. It is. Also, like, how is that your solution, my friend? You saw how one death and one kill turned you into like some kind of like weird wacky guy like why are you gonna kill everybody else he also burned the dude's body and then he was like we'll all be with him but he won't because the body's gone so and let's let's also be honest here he is just as responsible for the death yes as allison let's say yeah because allison's only fault according to the people in in the car was pointing them in a direction yeah so Neil doesn't get to play this weird high and mighty card. It's it's so weird. I think the only reason he does is because he was like the one person to be like, let's call the cops. Yeah. But he could have done that at any time. Yeah. Maybe that maybe that also explains his like fixation with Allison too. And his oh. like his the way he adores her just because she is the only other person that he feels like was blameless to an extent in this situation. Well, did Although Fran neither do of them anything told. either? No, I didn't think and Fran Brenda did anything. Really she s- other than be annoying, Fran didn't do anything. <laughs> which, like, Brenda, which one? Brenda was like yelling to shut off the lights, right? But she didn't. Yes, Brenda was the weird, I let shut off the lights in the desert person. Wait, why would, that's just... Okay. Because she thought it was funny, I think. I don't I don't, I don't know either. Well, These yeah. characters really didn't make any sense to me in right. that, in that whole chapter. They have a bad idea of what a joke is. <laughs> 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 Turning off lights doesn't seem funny to me. No, I bet Brenda's the kind of person who dips her fries into the ketchup bottle. Yes, instead of yes. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> she like probably orders don't... her Big Mac where, where. <laughs> We're just taking shots at Brenda at this point. This is just thinking about Brenda. <laughs> well, Fran's not even worth our discussion. No, Fran's Poor too Fran. forgettable. Fran She's literally didn't a... do a single thing in this book. 
<laughs> I know. And you, you could have just completely taken her out. She also gets the first letter. I thought she was going to be the main character because of that. Yeah. And I also thought that there was something that was going to happen because, like, Fran technically benefited from the first task, and so did. Yeah. Well, I don't know who else. No one really else did. But I figured that was going to be like a common theme. Like if they did it, they would somehow benefit in some sick way. Right. Didn't somebody tell us to keep an eye out in this book for green eyes? I read that somewhere. Well, yeah, there's there's multiple references to green eyes. Neil apparently has green eyes. Yeah, because they like talk about how his ring matches his eyes. The ring, yeah, emerald. the ring matches the, the emerald eyes one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there are two things that I do not like about this book, and one of them is the fact that like nobody dies, like gets murdered. That's I mean, I guess true. Nobody, nobody dies. actually dies. Uh, Neil Neil fades away. Right. The man, the man. Oh yeah. Well, well, we don't know if he dies because the book is unclear. <laughs> I guess what I know, I'm I just meant, basing it off the thud. I guess what I meant by this is that like we think people get murdered and then they show up in this house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a bummer. But um, so another thing that I didn't like was like when um Neil is like sharing at the very end like he's going on his whole thing and he's like you guys have your trophies and your star performances yeah. and your paintings and it's like that's cool and all but that's like not why you originally did all this <laughs> yeah, right, you did it. right and so that like really bothered me that they tried pushing another reason for it and it didn't even last that long it was like one sentence and then they moved on again so i just yeah, wanted he, to complain he was about upset that because he, he wanted the <laughs> mit scholarship and such it's like okay now you're just a petty little boy <laughs> right? like that was I, literally not your motive a few seconds ago yeah <laughs> i understood like what he was saying but i was like this yeah. is like not no one cares about this man right I think maybe like part of that is when I read that, I was like, I was thinking about it from the perspective of his guilt, like coming from his guilt mm-hmm. over killing that guy. How since that time, like they're still, his friends are still achieving mm-hmm. stuff, whereas he's gotten cancer and he has no, like, he's going to die. Like he doesn't have a future. So maybe like that's just kind of why he was so, maybe it didn't originally start out as him being so upset about that. But then as time went on and he's just like, how the fuck dare you guys move on with your lives? I mean, meanwhile, nobody even knows how sick he is. So it's super unfair, mm-hmm. but sort of understandable from his perspective but what's funny is if neil was the good guy everybody said he was he would have taken the responsibility for the murder because he's going to die soon anyway yeah yeah so fuck neil <laughs> is well, what i'm I saying wanna, even if i was dying though i wouldn't want to put that on my like life like i wouldn't want people to be like after i die okay, like, oh they okay. murdered somebody well i, I think know, also I did like not. if he were truly a good person he would have also said like tony was driving the car and he probably didn't want to like throw his friends under the bus and then like die <laughs> but so he'll but just it, throw them under his car he tortures his friends yeah well i mean i think he was getting a little crazy yeah i don't know he wasn't thinking clearly <laughs> he he reminds me of a lot of the villain in slumber party mm because we're expected to take some leaps with him. Like, okay, he's managed to just contain his crazy. <laughs> I respect that a lot, actually, though. <laughs> I think people that yeah, can that like, cover work. up their own insanity, that's great. Good for you. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Shall we move on to Thirst? Yes. So, Corey, is this your first Pike book? Yeah. Okay. So what we, uh, we often talk about how Pike added sex to the teen books we were already reading, you know, so there was sex Mm -hmm. and there was violence and nobody in this genre writes sex the way Pike does. And it's fascinating to us. Okay. So I have a lot for the sexuality section this week. But before I get into that, does anyone else? I have nothing. Nah, bro, I got nothing. Sorry. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> First of all, I don't know if this is a thing, but I feel like it is. Na- Natasha Kinski is mentioned twice by two different characters as being very sexy in this book. And I believe Natasha Kinski has been mentioned in other Pike books. Oh, God. So I think... I think we may have just found a Pike fetish. Oh God! In <laughs> Natasha Kinski. Is this an actual person? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Um. I think she's. In I Kathy. didn't know that either. Okay. Thank you. Who is she? Oh, she's pretty. She's an actress. 
But that's like uh, weird that he like singles her out. I'm sorry, what's her name? Natasha <laughs> Kinsky. Kinsky. It's spelled N A S T A S S J A. Like if it's She's married to Quincy. She was married to Quincy Jones. I don't know who that is either. I'm it's sorry. Also well, what's weird about musician. it is like had it been um like who's that lady? Farrah Fawcett or something like Mm-hmm. One of those people that was like known for being sort of like a sex symbol back in the day. I feel like that would have made more sense, but I, no one really knows who Natasha Kinsky is. Well, no, I, she's I, so she's famous, famous no, but not like that famous. Here's, you, I've never heard of her, but, but she's gorgeous. But yeah, I think I'm in love with her. It's Cat People. She what was the star of Cat People. Right. What is that? In 1982, which was sort of a werewolf story, but cats. But like, did a lot of oh. kids watch that well i th- i think maybe teenagers, Pike, yeah right? it was one of those i mean it was it was classified as erotic horror so it was one of those that you'd you'd rent you know on the sly oh, oh. she has short hair go on girl look at her she's so cute <laughs> i like sly. yeah she's so cute but i don't know i felt like that was an odd choice like those it, it lips is, and it, her eyebrows i feel like this makes sense for some of the descriptions in this book yeah <laughs> wow Every character, so, he just wanted to model off of her. Yeah. <laughs> so we have two Natasha Kinsky things here. First, Allison had worried about her small breasts. But since Natasha Kinsky had become a big star and the guys had flipped over the curve of her hips, Allison figured she could have doubled for her from the neck down. And the concern had diminished. So that's one. And two... Tony turned around, taking in with a glance the plain but tidy room. He was not big on frills, except for his poster of Natasha Kinsky and her snake, which hung on the wall at the foot of his bed and greeted him each morning with an erotic smile. I thought that that was, I thought that that was like some play on like Britney Spears. And I was so confused. So, yeah, no, so, yeah, I didn't realize there was an actual picture like that. Like it's yeah, okay, well, well, um, <laughs> guys, she has green eyes. Yeah, isn't that like we, a bad thing in his book? She's evil. We it, figured it, it out. It just, she's a sugar sister. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Natasha Kinsky probably. Yeah, if you if you wanted to to cast, you know, nineteen eighties actress as uh, Alexa Close, Natasha Kinsky is right there. I think I'd watch it. In the and 80s. you should all watch Cat People. It's awesome. I will definitely am excited. Okay, let's move on here. Um, he had gone out with her a few times with the excuse that she was an interesting person, and that's in quotes. That's interesting. <laughs> oh but God. in reality, to see if he couldn't further his sex education. Their last date, they had gotten into some heavy fooling around. If he hadn't started rehashing in his mind all the sound advice he'd read about in the Reader's Digest, frustrating Joan in the extreme, they would have certainly gone all the way. There was always next time. I've read my fair share of Reader's Digest. There is not (laughs) sex advice in it. Like, there just isn't. That's so weird. Yeah, that's isn't that something in, like, Cosmo magazines or something? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But Tony wouldn't have been reading Cosmo. But he would be I don't know why he's Reader's reading Digest? the Reader's Digest, though. I mean, I read Reader's Digest, but really only for the jokes. I read it as a kid because it was all my parents had, and I thought that because I liked books and was a reader, I was supposed to read things that were called <laughs> like so readers. Funny. This, That's adorable. yeah. So I, I was like, Reader's readers. Digest. It's for readers. Yeah. I gotta like this. I did not like this. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's not so good. boring. Um, Joan had a phenomenal tan. Rumor had it that she sunbathed nude in her backyard, and not always alone. Okay, Joan, go ahead. See, this is what I mean. I love her. She's living her life. This is what I can support. And that's a that's a recurring image, the the nude backyard sunbathing and skinny dipping in Pike right there. It goes hand in hand with the California adoration. Like. Yes, yes. Or villainization. Yeah. Because he goes back and forth. Like this one, Allison's, 
interested in California and being an actress, but she's not the bad guy. Like in some most others where the person interested in California and acting and modeling are the bad guy. It's weird. Interesting. Uh, like, Allison is a good you. girl. She had no intention of giving up her virginity on the first date. She would put up a fair fight. So she told herself, but um, she was kind of hoping to put some tarnish on her good girl image. I had a hard time deciding whether that belonged in the problematic section or the sexuality section. Probably both. It, it does. It is definitely both, but yeah, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one, I want, I want someone to explain this to me because I still don't understand. He had a hand resting on her bare knee and the other one was tracing erotic circles inside her ear. Yeah. <laughs> What and this was, was not her imagination. His touch was a pure delight inside her ear. So he's like literally that. sticking fingers in her ear. That's like so. What is an erotic circle? Yeah. I, <laughs> is, I, are there erotic I, triangles? No, just no, circles. no, no. It's no, it's because kind. it's hard edge triangles. No, no, the, the <laughs> angles ruin it. But yeah, it's that. That just I didn't get that at all. Yeah, that was odd. So here we go. Allison was kneeling by his side. She had on a green t-shirt and sexy white shorts that showed her legs to the point where his imagination could comfortably take care of the rest. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever seen a naked body, like your imagination can yeah, comfortably I mean, seriously, take care yeah. of the rest, dude. Come on. If you've seen cat people... <laughs> Your imagination can take care of the rest. And we've already said that Allison looks like Natasha Kinski from the neck down. So come oh, on. Sorry, I, I thought, uh, <laughs> I forget that Cat People is a movie. And so when you keep saying that, I keep thinking like from the movie Cats. And I was like, yeah, I guess I can see <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> I was like, it would be a little different, but sure, Cooper. <laughs> I like that you're willing to go with that. I was really trying to be supportive. <laughs> I just we don't kink shame, so if you oh god, <laughs> I, just, I was just trying to be like a good friend. Oh. <laughs> I'm dying. I need to watch this movie now. Oh my god! Oh my god! I just like that it's not kink shaming. That so like I just so readily agreed too, even yes. thinking that you were yeah, talking about actual I, cat know, people. I know this is what makes you an excellent co-host. I'm legit blushing you, right you now. Are, I hope you, you are know. ride or die. Yes, I really am. <laughs> Wow. Oh, God. Okay. Um, here is the worst way to interrupt a sexy moment. We have to talk, Tony said, coming out of a lengthy kiss in the cramped confines of the front seat of his car, taking back his left leg, which had somehow intertwined with Allison's right leg. They were not lying down, but they were far from sitting. Neither of them was missing any articles of clothing, although Allison's blouse was halfway unbuttoned. Saucy. Saucy indeed. <laughs> and speaking of Hollywood, I think I think Allison's masturbating in the bathtub, personally here. The wet warmth was a delight. Slipping all but her kneecaps and face beneath the bubbly surface, she closed her eyes and thought of how when she was rich and famous actress, she would have a jacuzzi installed in her Beverly Hills mansion where she could entertain Tony in the way she had read about in Hollywood Wives. <laughs> the erotic film strip was only half over. They still had their bathing suits on when the phone rang. Oh. I thought she was just daydreaming, but I I can Wasn't see. She, was this like when the lights were starting to go out? Yeah, yeah. This this is a, this is the build up to the end. She's taking a bath. Interesting. First. I thought she was like really yeah, scared right. and was just trying to like take her mind off of it. Well, I mean, she she clearly well, did take her mind off. Of it. <laughs> I guess for a few so. seconds. But but I I also love that in her fantasy they start in their bathing suits. <laughs> It's like it sounds like a like a Tina Belcher fantasy or yeah. something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they touched each other's butts and changed yeah. the world. I love it. <laughs> and then there were horses and zombies. <laughs> <laughs> this is while Tony is sneaking up on Neil in the uh in the climax. 
uh, thinking about taking Allison back to his house. His folks were gone too, but that didn't mean his motivation was in any way remotely connected with sex. They could sleep together in the same room for protection, maybe even in the same bed, and not actually dot, dot, dot. When I was reading that, I was like, listen, Chris, I think yeah. I think there's some more important stuff going on that like it's, maybe uh, he's more worried about his girlfriend like dying and getting brutally yeah. murdered. Your, your cutesy little fantasy of maybe afterwards in the glow of the excitement of having just been almost murdered, we could, you know, sleep in the same bed. But, you know, for protection. Well, I was like, yeah, obviously for protection. Like, this is not the moment, man. <laughs> 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 and then this is really fascinating this is my last one so <laughs> kip's explanation for where he was after being kidnapped the cops theoretically bought this <laughs> yes oh I love not this. one but three <laughs> beautiful girls were responsible for his kidnapping he told the police he put up a good fight that's how he lost all that blood in his bedroom but they wrestled him down and tied him up and dumped him in their plushly carpeted and heavily perfumed van. <laughs> they didn't take him to one spot, just drove him all over the place. And whichever two weren't driving would amuse themselves by doing all sorts of atrocious things to his naked body. There was an Amazon blonde, a large chested redhead and a tireless brunette. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you know, if, 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 if people are kidnapped and someone dies, I don't think the cops are going to take kindly to your wildly lying story of where you've been. Well, I thought it was weird because, like, I I felt like if I were the cops, I would have figured that the people that kidnapped Fran would have also been the people that kidnapped Kip. Yeah, exactly. If cops are looking into this. It, it's this is just ridiculous <laughs> really just just absolutely ridiculous there but it's funny i appreciate it but it, it is funny it is funny it is funny there was also i don't have it highlighted cuz cooper i honestly thought you were you were going to get this one there's one where like did i miss one he's like he's like you can sit on my hand or something oh, like that i had that one but yeah, then i and that I, one i you know it's it's when i get through all these the, my gigantic document full of my highlights for the thirst section sometimes i feel a little embarrassed and delete some of them <laughs> no Aww. that's that's fair i so i'm going to i'm going to when i take notes at the rare times that i do so like today my note just says tony yelling neil in the cemetery lol oh yeah, my god right. that part. <laughs> That was such a weird little scene. It is. Wasn't it weird? Also, I, sorry, I noticed I have a second tiny one. Why do yeah. they all drink milk? Ooh, yes, I know. I thought of you so many times God, with the sheer nauseous. amount of milk being consumed in so this awful. book. That's why I was like, so these are definitely, definitely not today's teenagers. Gen Z no. eats milk. Well, and, God. And uh, Corey, just so you know, Cassie has some major issues with milk. Um, Who doesn't? Milk is so yeah. disgusting. Right? It's awful. It is awful. If you're drinking, if you if you are in 2020 and you're still drinking like dairy milk, like not almond milk or something, I I don't know what to tell you. We're in 2021. <laughs> yeah, we are in 2021. Are I know 2020 just doesn't exist. But 20, okay, but we've had this milk beef forever. Okay, yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. I just in my head it was just like if you're drinking this in 2020, but in 2021 <laughs> it's fine. You can do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad that you appreciate my milk hate <laughs> solidarity. It's, yeah, that's it's like that a big thing for Gen Z. Yeah, I did not know, but I can't stand it. It makes me nauseous. It's so gross. <laughs> it's just, the idea of it just ugh. Anyway, I always end up bringing up the milk, but it's in every book. Yeah, it, it's been it's been a lot lately, certainly. And then, yeah, the yelling in the cemetery was very just dropping to his knees, screaming. Yeah, it was so I mean, dramatic. It's, it's like Darth Vader's no at the end yes. of, uh, I don't know, whatever episode three was called. Um, we, we love the dramatics. But I we also, do. whenever whenever someone says Neil oddly, I just think of the Dungeons and Dragons episode of um, Community. Yes. Where oh my God. Troy is just responding to everything with Neil. <laughs> <laughs> It 
really so, yeah. it reminded me of the part and I know what you did last summer where she goes, What are you waiting for? Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Yes. I had that in my head. You all too. you like all it. know that was directed by a teenager, right? I know what you did last summer. That scene was directed by a teenager. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. So this kid won a contest and he got to direct a scene. And for whatever reason, he wanted her standing in the middle of the road screaming that line. <laughs> Well, that did okay. end up being like the most iconic line well, in the movie. And, it is. And so... it this iconic moment, it's batshit. It's but... awful, but it's perfect. And I love yeah. it. I can picture her perfectly too with her arms open and yeah. her, her little tank toppy shirt with uh-huh. her hair over it. Like, yeah. Can you that imagine when being a that actress? A lot of teenagers and... fell in love with Jennifer Love Hewitt right there. Well, she was in um, Can't Hardly Wait, too. She was, yes. That's when I, I fell with her in love and with Seth Green. Love Hewitt. And Ethan Embry and uh, Amber Benson. It, it just had a full cast yeah. of really it'll just be, A+. It's, it is stocked, that movie. Yeah. It's on Netflix. Anyways, I, did, I derailed again. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move into the problematic section because I have multiple yes. this time. Um, so if anyone wants to go first before I throw out my angry moments. I feel like my angry moments are going to be very similar to yours probably (laughs) you can have it from i don't need it (laughs) (laughs) okay well um i'm gonna i'm gonna go with one that i had to read several times before i realized that yes it is in fact a problematic line tony could see him pacing in lane two a squat powerfully built black period what i don't get it (laughs) black runner next to him He's oh. calling oh, they just, a, squat, a squat, powerfully built black. Oh, that's weird. I, I think I read. I don't know. I didn't. I don't recall that. That's yeah, I don't think up. I read. Yeah, I, I had to read. It and just like black, what? Black, what? Black. Oh no, nothing. Okay. Huh. Yikes. Uh, let's see. This one's mild. I didn't want us to have a hysterical female's opinion to deal mm. with. Oh yeah. Yep. Then we get a little rougher. Fran's car was a Toyota Corolla, and Kip promptly snorted his disgust for Japanese workmanship. Mm -hmm. But then there's this. I'm in love with Kip. Her gray eyes rolled. Woo, does he know? Yes, but he thinks I'm a faggot. Yep, that's the part. (laughs) I knew you would have (laughs) Wait, who said that? Yep. Who said that? Tony. Um, Tony. Oh, okay. I remember which part now. Sorry. And he was trying to be funny at the yeah. time, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was real. I was it, like, wait, did this happen? I thought, okay. It was hilarious. Yeah. yeah so but, funny. Again, it, it, really it reminded me immediately of my um, my Twitter back and forth with the writer of the Bill and Ted movies. <laughs> when, when I asked him, will somebody get called a fag in the third Bill and Ted? And he said, no. And I got excited. And then someone called me a social justice warrior and accused me of virtual signaling. Oh my God. Virtue signaling. Yeah. I like people who call me social justice warrior. Like, thank like you. I am a warrior, yeah. right? Like I'm, I'm being a warrior for justice. Like that's fantastic. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck kind of insult is that? It's so dumb. Yeah. It's like you don't understand what you're saying. Really. Yeah, no, you sound really silly right now. Yeah. Go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay does anyone else have any problematic stuff i mean i'm willing to forgive a lot it was 1986 there was just uh we already talked like i think we already read a lot of the quotes but it was just like some of the slut shamey stuff yeah. was like yeah. and that's in a lot of the books and it's just always that's like just a thing i don't like it yeah and and it's either the guys slut shaming the girls or the girls slut shaming each other because they want to be better than each other. It's yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah. I thought the misogyny within it was a lot, but that just felt like the time period. Yeah. yeah. Well then let's move on to the season of passage where we discuss the best and worst writing and the ever growing section, Pikeisms. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen to them. Oh children I like of the it. night. Love that. <laughs> They're just saying hi. So (laughs) before I dig in again, I'm going to offer it to the group. Does anyone have any quotes, choice quotes in the best section? Nuh-uh. Okay. A shadow stood over him all night, forcing him to labor on a task that seemed impossible to complete. 
They were in a deserted field and he was working with his bare hands, digging a grave that would never be deep enough. <laughs> okay. I just, I just love that right. no one, no one ever responds to my quotes. Like, I'm so like sorry. yes, that I was a good just, one. We're gonna give snaps. You just can't. Yeah. We're just over here, like. Oh, I like that. No, I like that. <laughs> then, then at least I feel heard. It's like, did, did it cut out? No, I did like that. I thought it was a yeah. very good section. <laughs> next time, next time I'm gonna wait, Thank and then you. in the silence, I'll be like, "Are you gonna read it, Coop? Like, come on." <laughs> 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 okay, the sounds of terror erupting from the throats of his friends signaled the beginning of the countdown of the Twilight Seconds. It reminded me of which was the book that ended with time dilating? Uh, um, what? Give me a kiss, I think. Where they were all high on the nitrous oxide and so time oh, got wet yes. wonky. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. I, I completely that. forgot about Interesting. that. Interesting. There was a there's a confrontation in a boathouse that's steadily laughing. filling with nitrous oxide. And so the, the the two having the confrontation are slowly getting more and more out of it. It's really interesting. It was written really well too in a yeah. believable sort of way. Uh, that's this, this, I really like very simple. That's how it was with prayers. They were always said when it was too late. Mm, loves that. Yeah. Th then, uh, there, there are some very weird, goofy lines that I, I don't know if they're bad or they're funny. I, I, I really like them, but I don't know that they're good writing. <laughs> um, I'm so scared. Fran whispered. What if they don't like my walls? In the entire history of the theater, Allison said, I've never heard of a set being booed. Then, Is that uh, true? A, a, I feel like I've never once, I've done stuff. high school theater like forever. I've never once heard someone that's making sets be concerned about any of that. Well, did you notice that she was also uh, credited with special effects? Oh. Like that was literally her credit when they were talking about what the characters are doing on the play. There aren't any Fran special, did special effects, effects in that show. What? I yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, I that was in the outer odd. wing, she's like, Woo. <laughs> 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 just like shaking some foil for yeah. sound effects. <laughs> uh, this this line I really I just loved. It's so absurd and weird because it's about the play. They decided to get married. It was inevitable. It was in the script. Yeah, I, it's so, it's so deadpan and weird. I love that. And this one, no one with any scruples or benign intentions would have gone to the back door. Only psychotics with masks over their grinning skulls and sharp cutting implements in their greasy hands used back doors after dark. She'd seen the movies. She knew the score. I felt like he was making a good point with that one. Who oh, uses yeah. the I, back door? I like door? that a lot. Though, though in my house, you always use the back door because the front door was for guests. Oh, okay. That's valid. And we probably had muddy feet. So you use the back door. Am I the only person that read that part of the book and was like, <laughs> back <door>? Yeah. <laughs> I am? No, no, no. Me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I, like, even during this conversation, the amount of times you've been like, you don't come in the back door after night. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christopher Pike, I see what you feel like, okay? Like, that's, it's, you do you, sir. <laughs> Cassie, I, I feel like I'm saying this every episode now, but I adore you. <laughs> I am happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a noir type line. Lust was not at the forefront of his mind. Whoever had said danger was an aphrodisiac had said so in safe surroundings. That's fair. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Tell that to the people who are trying to have sex in the snow in the other book. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> negative, <laughs> negative 15 degrees. <laughs> and she's all grumpy that he won't have sex with her. That was the only other book he'd written besides this one, too, that had been out like for it was Slumber yeah, Party. That so was the let's... first one. That yeah, one, these yeah. are funny. Uh, I have a worst. One worst. The, the tone was of a psychotic with delusions of godhood. I, I mean, Wait, what, is that what? I mean, that's it. That's it's just a terrible line. It seems, <laughs> is it? I think it just so. seems regular. I don't know. Okay. I read that as just like, eh, all right. Okay, fine. Okay. 
I'm not a fancy technical writer. Maybe it's like bad it somehow. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. Like it seemed fitting. No, it it's it's a, a big leap to make from the first chain letter. Yeah. I think. Okay. Okay. So in the context of yeah. when that was said in the story. Because I think that's in chapter one. That, oh, okay. that line. Well, yeah, I mean paint the paint a face on this thing. Total psycho over there. So now I have psycho a is like, hey guys, please just spread this letter. I'm gonna use the back door. <laughs> <laughs> These are just weird lines now. Um he favored a particular brand of lemonade that came in eight ounce clear plastic cartons that could be purchased only in drive through dairies. The fuck is a drive through dairy? No clue. Is it like a Dairy Queen sort of thing? Or I, oh. I guess it could be. Or or an Uberweiss. Not Uberweiss. Is it Uberweiss? I don't know. I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> I'm not familiar no with your friends, Cooper. <laughs> I'm assuming... It can't be Uberweiss. Did they have milkmen back then? Uberweiss! <laughs> Uberweiss. I literally thought you said Uberwives, like a wife. That was yeah, like, like an wife. ultimate wife. <laughs> <laughs> you could just like use your app to get a wife now. <laughs> yeah. Wives. <laughs> that kind of Uber. Oh, Oberweiss is a is is a a milk and ice cream place, and you can get lemonade there. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Some of it's just really dated. Like he calls it like Denny's coffee shop. He's like, I got, I went to a Denny's coffee <laughs> right, shop right. or coffee shop or whatever. And I'm like, who, who's ever called it? First of all, as long as I've been alive, it's just been Denny's diner. But right. even now, people just call it Denny's. Yeah. Denny's coffee shop. So uh, Allison uh, was searching for something to occupy her head and she spotted the movie cassette she had rented yesterday on her way home from school. The choices were two extremes. Are you ready? The Wizard of Oz and Emmanuel. Now, for those who don't know, Emmanuel is an X-rated softcore porno from the 70s. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. I had no idea. I didn't either. Yeah. Uh I, I don't buy a high schooler just randomly picking up The Wizard of Oz and Emmanuel without the person at the video store saying, did you pick the wrong video yeah. out from under? Like, it was, it's so out there to have that as one of her choices. That's just like, as, you should have used cat people. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, put cat people. Maybe she wanted to see it again. I don't know. Appreciate the curve of the hips that she could relate to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then uh so while allison's panicking that someone's coming to get her she <laughs> throws out this thought line did you hear about that girl who was stuffed up her own chimney <laughs> yeah this was such I, a weird i don't even know what to make of that line <laughs> well it comes back over and over they're telling the it whole does. story and like why what does that have yeah, to do with any of this it's really weird and it has nothing to do with anything else happening. Why? Like, he, if her fear was related to the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, he could have used, like, a scene from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I, like, I don't I'm, understand that. I'm so confused. How does the chimney thing have to do with Wizard of Oz? It doesn't. It doesn't. That's what, that's our point. It's just a oh. weird non sequitur. Oh, okay. 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 I'm on. I'm back. I'm back here. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Uh, let's see. Okay. So she gets out of her house. She gets to the uh, other place. That made her downfall, after all, her struggles all the more ironic. Turning to flee, she simply slipped and fell and hit her head on a brick planter wall and was knocked out. I've been there. I <laughs> well, you, Sometimes that's, being clumsy That's sucks. fine, but you know what that is? That's a writer saying, I don't know, she fell. <laughs> Haven't we all been there, though? Yes, but it doesn't like, make I don't know it what acceptable. To do. I'm going to make this bitch trip. Oh, she's knocked out now. Next, let's move the story forward. Yeah. Guess she's asleep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's got to be lazy to get something to where you want it to go. Like, Very true. Very true. Yeah. I feel like he, he could have knocked her out instead, like the yeah. bad guy. Yeah. You know? I mean, because he does have super strength and speed already. Maybe they're trying to make it like an extra step of how he doesn't want to hurt her. Oh, okay. Because he does love her. Yeah. Or care about or I did really like the fact that he has a record with music and a cocktail party on it. What? Remember, he was playing. Yes. Uh, the was, the sound oh, yeah. of music yes. and a cocktail party in the empty the house. The trick, the party thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's some Home Alone type thing, and I love it. Like yeah. that's 
it, it also gives me a little of the like the shining where you know there's a, there's the party going on in the next room oh you know? yeah. yeah it gives me a little of that vibe well i love that it she fell great. for it too yeah right right <laughs> yeah. hey there's a party yeah that sounds about right <laughs> uh in the epilogue for no reason whatsoever we get a straw blonde with an excited face and a skimpy top bounding out the door. <laughs> All of about 16 chewing gum years old. She wasted no time raking Tony over with her dizzy blue eyes. I don't understand why that little girl needed to be in it. It was weird. Yeah, just to give us Allison's jealousy, I, I guess. We love oh, a bimbo moment. She didn't come though. off as jealousy to me, did she? Was well, she yeah, jealous? She, she seemed grumpy that Tony was looking at her. I thought she was oh. more of like, ha ha. Like he's not going to cheat on like, me. Like that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> and then okay. I felt like Tony just like ignored it. Like he didn't really give yeah. her the time of the day, and like she tried really hard as like a little kid with a crush. And I don't know. It, to me, it was like if like a thirteen year old came over and had a crush on my boyfriend. I'm like, okay, we're adults. This is precious. Like, <laughs> get the fuck off my porch. You know, like not in. Not, I'm not jealous, but like this is cute and funny. But also, I'm bored of it now. Goodbye. <laughs> like, gotcha. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um. Did the did the graduation make sense to anybody? No. Mm-mm. It's basically just a wish fulfillment thing. They had Brenda sing a song at graduation after she'd been suspended for telling off all the teachers. Well, that literally never would have happened, especially because no. if we're assuming the theater teacher is the one that would like organize that. He yeah. probably does not like her. Well, not only did he organize it, but he accompanied her on the piano yeah. as she sang Schools Out for Summer by Alice Cooper. First of all, how do you sing that to the piano? Yeah. I, you make it a ballad. I can't. I can't. And second, <laughs> uh, like, there's nothing makes sense there. Kip is valedictorian. Brenda's singing a song. It's like. It's like Bayside High. There are only six kids in the whole yeah. high school or something. It doesn't like, make any Allison sense. But why not Allison singing the song if she's the star theater kid? Yeah. And wasn't, uh, you know, expelled. <laughs> and didn't tell the teacher sh- that she thought he was awful. It doesn't make any sense. So that's the end of my weirds. Now we're moving on to pikeisms. And, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, yes, Cassie, that is my first one. <laughs> I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget, and I was just reading it just now, and my brain like crossed wire, so I just shouted the word. I'm sorry, I was going to say I have one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Corey, oh my God, I'm crying. Pike's real so life much. sister is named Anne. Okay. And he often will put her name in the books. As like the dedication yeah, and the stuff. The first too. two oh. are dedicated to Anne. That's sweet. So, oh, it's a little weird, yeah. but it's nice. I mean, he also kills her in a few books. Oh, so yeah. and and he wrote a book about a guy writing books about his sister Anne yeah. and dying. It, it's there's a whole lot of levels here, but Anne is number one. That's like some number Gianni two. Versace like <laughs> fun time. <laughs> Just a little bit of incest as a treat. Mm-hmm. Number two is very specific junk food while dieting. (laughs) We have Hostess Twinkies. We have Ding Dongs. Sugar-saturated Pepsi. But constant references to dying, despite why worry about a few miserable calories when a madman would probably be executing her before school got out. Isn't that how we should all live life? As if a madman were about to kill us? Really, sure. post-COVID, it really should be, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a nice little time capsule moment. This isn't really a pikeism, but I have no idea where to put stuff like this. Fran dawdled over the front cover of a McCall's magazine that promised an exciting exclusive on princess dyes, taste, and sweaters, <laughs> and an in-depth article by a prominent psychiatrist on why women didn't trust their husbands. <laughs> Well, one of those is still relevant. <laughs> very, very true. Hey, people still <laughs> like Princess Di's fashion. I, I think she she is far more Just, relevant than most of that. Family. No, I'm not saying she's yeah. not irrelevant no, or not. that she has a bad fashion sense, but I feel like there would be other people more. Yeah. yeah. Like Kim Kardashian, her recent sweater or something now. But <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I totally would care what kind of sweater she was wearing. I'm into it. Probably fancy. Fancier than anything I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we also have a track meet, which has now appeared in, I think, three books and another fucking play. <laughs> Um, Did we get the one where the parents conveniently go away right before the bad stuff happens? I, I've got that here. Yeah, I've got that uh, absent parents <laughs> earlier in the day. Her parents had left for New York, her mother accompanying her father on an important business trip. So despite being reluctant to go, her mother still joins her father on a business trip she's not involved in. Yep. We love that. Really, all the parents just are absent for various ways in, in most of Pike's work. We have the healthcare system indictment. Neil quickly withdrew his hand from the sore area. My mom and I are still trying to put together the doctor's fees. We're almost there. It seems to come up a lot. This one's a new one that came up. Buckshot castration. Which <laughs> we all know happened in a memorable story in uh, Whisper of Death, Buckshot Castration. What was it? Horton, here's a... No, that's... Horton, here's no. a who? That's it. Wait, no, that's an action. That's it. That's it. Hang on. Wait, it was... It, was, was it? it wasn't that. that. He, was that the, was a, he has the weird fucking name, but it takes a walk, I think. Um, I'm looking okay. at my notes here. Yeah, yeah. Helter yeah. Skater yeah. takes a oh. walk. Right, okay. That's okay. what it is. What did I say? Horton, here's a who. Okay. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> totally similar. I can it's see similar. how I got yeah, those sure. confused. <laughs> uh, and and Cassie, this one's just for you. Playgirl magazine. <laughs> that was in this? I missed that yeah. too. Uh, the whole time I was out there, I couldn't keep my eyes off them. What kind of question is that? Had you hung a Playgirl centerfold over oh. the fireplace, I wouldn't have noticed. Uh, yeah. I just did. a bitchy admon uh, admonition of, of Fran there. <laughs> Would that just be a big picture of a, a guy? Because that's a Playgirl, right? Yes. Playgirl is just like Playboy except guys. Yeah. So she's saying if there was a giant picture of a man of this weighing up there, she still wouldn't have noticed Apparently. It. That's what, yeah. Mm. Your, your, your sets are so unimportant <laughs> that even if you put a giant dick on the wall, I wouldn't notice. That was so we mean. Love a focused actress. That is very oh, right. mean. So unnecessary. Right, right. We don't love that. <laughs> I felt so no, bad she for was a Fran. Jerk. I'm telling you, she was no. just trying. Yeah, her Fran best. doesn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, to be okay, like uh, it, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate, but I'm going to because if you're in the middle of a play and you're the main star actress, yeah, and this little you don't mousy want to hear girl about comes up. Right? She's just like, I changed this. Did you notice it? Did you like that? Like, uh, I'm trying to remember my lines. I've got cues. Will you get out of my face? Like, And someone's but, trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah. Also. But she was, she was rude. And, you know, it's not the first time. So. Oh, can we? <laughs> you know what's also weird is that she wouldn't flub her lines. Because I have been in a million plays. And I think every single time I have flubbed one of my lines, everyone does it. Oh, it's yeah. such a simple thing. Yeah, it's not a big deal. So why was she so, like... I don't know. It bothered me that she wouldn't. Yeah, their, their steadfast refusal to play ball really kind of irritated me. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah. Because some of it was very low stakes. Yeah. And it's like, why don't you just do this? Like burning down the school, oh. I can understand why you wouldn't want to do that. But all the other ones were and like. And that one, Tony's willing to do for him. Now, yeah. that's, that's where, where Neil is being the most dickish. Because Tony is actually willing to do a horrible thing that has been asked of Neil. Yeah. By Neil. <laughs> that's that's I, what I was like. This dude is clearly the killer, right? Because he's giving himself the worst <laughs> ass. Yeah. Burn down the school. Well, that brings us to the last act. That's a pikeism. They burned the school in another book, too. Is it Midnight Club? It's a gym, I think, right? It is Midnight Club. Yeah, because it, yeah. it was the magic act. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing the seams. I know. I'm trying, like, I'm trying to like run through all the books we've read so far, and I'm like, wait a minute. There's this thing. There's this thing. I remember this. <laughs> well, and it is fun to read, like, because this was number two, so it's fun to see the origins of of mm -hmm. uh, these strings that stretch out for decades in the books. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's head over to last act and give our final thoughts out of five pikes. And Corey, as you are our guest, you get to go first. Oh, um. Can I do half pikes? You can, or you can just jam something on the pike just to make it make it extra special. <laughs> I would give it three and a half. I thought he did a really good job um, with the mystery of like 
who is the killer, I thought they all had a, a pretty good motive or like I could see all of them being murderers or whatever. And mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. It was a fun time. And as your first book uh, of Pikes, would it encourage you to read more? Definitely. I want to read the sequel now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's going to be wacky. Like yes, uh, when, when we had Grady Hendrix on to talk about Remember Me, he was telling us stuff about the sequels to that that were just shocking. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. So, yeah, I, I think once we get to sequels, uh, it's going to be a very interesting time here on the Pikecast. <laughs> okay, Cassie, what do you got? I am going to give it three Pikes with a little clear lemonade bottle from the dairy stand <laughs> um and it has to be poisoned with codeine it's a drive um, through dairy get it right drive through dairy right drive sorry through dairy. they're so common how could i have mistaken yeah. that yeah. all um, over california right yeah everywhere. drive through dairy everywhere <laughs> um it, it it wasn't it's not my favorite pike and i remember that from even being younger it wasn't my favorite pike then either but it's definitely not the worst and there there are others that i i I, I don't want to say like I actively dislike because I they're all just have this kind of nostalgic place for me. Um, but this one didn't have a lot of the things of some of those others that like made me angry. And I was just like, I hated everybody, you know, like I really like Joan, obviously. Um, <laughs> and there were a lot of things that I don't think Christopher Pike specifically said in this book that I inferred. And maybe I'm just pulling all of that out of my ass. It's possible. Mm. Um but I like being able to add extra layers for myself into my interpretations of something because I think that's part of the fun of reading. Yeah. So yeah, I like this. Well, I my appreciation good. of Joan, which was already high, was made even higher by your suggestions. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just me, too. I'm glad Corey got that same vibe because I was <laughs> when I started talking, I was like, oh, God, am I like the only person who thinks she's gay? In my defense, <laughs> though, I think every character is gay. It's a problem. <laughs> that's honestly, yeah, that's a good my way to approach things. So You're just like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they always say like characters will say a little thing and you're like wait a minute yeah. like i i got you there I, <laughs> I do feel like as as a queer person myself the the desire for representation Definitely. does sometimes yeah. cause us to amp up the 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 noise you know the the signal to noise yeah. thing it's like we're we're desperately tuning for, uh, but that's but you know what like if i want to see myself in a character i'm going to and i don't think that's a bad yeah, absolutely so no yeah. agreed. And if, if Pike wants to come on here and tell us that she's not gay, Pike, come on, <laughs> come talk to us, come to our show well, and you can talk gay? to us about Joan. Because if not, he could have no, done I, it unintentionally. That's that's yeah. very true. Yeah. That's true too. Yeah. And I think it's I think it is cool, even if it was an unintentional thing, that maybe somebody who's younger or even somebody who's older could read it and be like, oh, I kind of like recognize a little bit of myself from being yeah, a child and absolutely. having like a a strict parent in my life. Yeah. Becca? What you got okay. for me? So you said you can't wait <laughs> you to share your ra- rating. Yeah, with you. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna do this. Okay. <laughs> oh god. So I'm gonna give it wow. four point five pikes written on an envelope. That's the color of spoiled meat. <laughs> Ooh, off purple. Four point five. It. I was gonna give wow. it five, but what? then I started thinking about how I was kind of bothered by like the fact that they didn't stay done. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's fair. So that's that's fair. really the only thing that's like knocking it down that point five because I I really did enjoy it. Like, like I said earlier, I was like flipping pages. I was into it, and I don't know it was it was probably one of my favorites so far. Well, well, Becca, four point five puts it on par with Monster, your previous wow. highest oh, rated nice. book. I, I really thought this one was higher for some reason, but yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like I said, it would have been a five if I wasn't annoyed that people didn't stay dead. So. <laughs> you, did you like this one more than Monster or do you like Monster more than this one? Oh, I think they're about even. Like again, Monster had like, like I think when we talked about it during the episode, um, the gore and everything obviously won my heart. Monster over. had a lot of gore. Yeah. 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 So I think that puts it up a little bit higher than this one. That's understandable. And so that's what I'm, – I'm surprised you rated this one so too, highly yeah. like because I expected – um, or just because I know how much you love the gore and the blood right. and the deaths and stuff. So I'm glad you liked it. I'm really glad you oh, liked thank it. Thank you. I'm glad I liked <laughs> it. I was actually quite surprised that I liked it as much as I did, especially with this one being the one right after Slumber Party. And that one was like a total flop. So. <laughs> yeah. It was so, <laughs> really yeah. Surprised. It was really good. I didn't, it was like a lot scarier than I expected it mm-hmm. to be. That last chase scene in Allison's house, like, yeah, that exactly. was really scary. 
that last chase scene within Allison's house, like that one really, I, I'll admit, like I, I was reading that really late at night and I had to like take a second to stop afterwards. <laughs> I really, I really like that too. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, the having to load the shotgun yeah. and shooting through the door and yeah, that was that was intense. I love it, and and never forget Neil in the cemetery Neil. screaming. <laughs> Neil. <laughs> well, I'm. You know what? Uh, at, at, at the start, I was going to rank this with Slumber Party, mm. uh, which I gave two to Slumber Party, but. Uh, with the new appreciation of Joan, which is even more so, and yeah, really just going over that last act here, uh, that's going to boost it to two and a half for me. Right. It's still, it still feels very sloppy to me, but it's his second book, so you know, yeah, it's understandable that it would feel sloppy. Um, but I did enjoy it, and it was one that I had read before. Uh, I believe it is the first one I'd ever read. Oh wow! Yeah, I know I read his work when it was when it was still point. So it was either this or Slumber Party were the first ones I read. And I don't is um isn't Weekend a point one too, or is it not? Weekend is okay. Okay, because I think that might be his second. Oh, uh, Grady on Goodreads says that it is his second book. So this may be his third book. Oh. So weekend was also 1986. Okay, Corey, this was great talking to you about it. I'm so happy you joined Thank us. Thank you so this. much for having me. This was really fun. And we hope we'll have you back for another Pike book yeah. in the future. But before then, where can our listeners find more about you online? Um, so my website is gorycory.com, and then I'm at gorycoryhorror on Twitter and at underscore gory quarry underscore on Instagram. And I <laughs> I also run the Scream Teens podcast, which you can find through Anatomy of a Scream. Becca, where can we find you online? Yes. Okay. So I have a blog where I mostly talk about books, which is as told by Bex.wordpress.com. I'm also on Twitter at as told by Bex and my bookstagram which I obviously talk about books because it's a book Instagram. So <laughs> anyway, sorry, my Instagram where I talk about books is read with books. <laughs> and Cassie, how about you? Um, I'm, I haven't been blogging as much, so I'm honestly, and I took a break from bookstagram, so I'm just going to plug my personal stuff yeah. so you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at control alt Cassie. So it's like the keys on your computer, C-T-R-L-A-L-T-C-A-S-S-I-E. And then you can also go to my art shop and look at colorful, cool things and books and bookmarks and prints. And that's shop. Let's get galactic.com. Uh, you can find me at coopersbeckett.com. I'm on all the social media at Cooper S. Beckett, and you can find my art at Beckett Arts. Um, my art is a little saucy, so, uh, you know, be warned. <laughs> I'll just say that. You can find the Pikecast on Twitter, Instagram, and all other social media at the Pikecast. It's very simple, and we'd really appreciate it if you would show us your Pike books and use the hashtag show us your Pike. We'll retweet and share them to our stories. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Pikecast, and that helps us keep things going. Yay. <laughs> Now, Pikers, your homework for next time, a later one. We are moving to 1999, our latest Pike book so far for The Grave, which was weirdly hard to get my hands on very early when I was collecting all these. So we will see you next time on the Pikecast. Oh, shit. I did woo too fast. <laughs> <laughs> You survive the night, friends. You can peek out from under your covers and see the first blues of dawn out the window. Thanks for spending the night with the Pikecast, and we hope you'll join us again next time. Until then, Pikers, pleasant dreams. It's a very welcome point because we have seen... Um, I'm so sorry if you guys heard how loud that was. <laughs> That's okay. That we was, all paused. I was, wow. I was about. To, I was gonna mute, but I was like, "He's gonna be gone soon. He's gonna be gone." Um, where's the quote here? Uh, shit. Um. Oh, for, for fuck's sake. <laughs>
So stick around for more of the pike dip. <laughs> <laughs> the hell was that? What was that? I'm sorry, my folder just like dropped on the floor. <laughs> okay, let me let me do that outro. <laughs> well, let's move on to my favorite section. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. First. You can find the Pikecast online at the Pikecast. My dog just coughed in the middle of me saying that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. It threw me off. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat>